I'd like to call to order the Charter Township of Chesterfield Regular Township Board meeting for Tuesday, March 12th, 2024 at 7 p.m. to order. Could we all stand for the pledge of, face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Berry, would you call the roll? Supervisor Kirsten. Here. Treasurer Elliott. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Joseph. Here. Trustee Domingue. Here. Trustee Vosberg. Here. Clerk Berry is here. Item four, approval of agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? <coughs> motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion by Clerk Berry. Except, but second. Supported by Treasurer Elliott. Clerk Berry, call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Item five, presentations. We have two scheduled tonight. The first one is the recognition of police officer Harpreet Otal being promoted to the rank of sergeant. Director Bassett, the floor is yours. Thank you. So we're here today to uh, promote our newest sergeant. Um, and you know, I, I, I've said this before when we do this, but uh, there is no more important position within our department when it comes to supervision than the position of sergeant. They are the one day to day at two in the morning, they are the one in charge of the operation. They are the critical one. And they are also the one whether or not an officer feels supported, whether or not an officer feels not supported. It is that sergeant day to day that's going to dictate um, how those officers react and how those officers are then going to serve our community. So the position that Harry is moving into is critical within our department, but I'm also confident that you can handle it, Harry, and I'm excited to have you as our newest sergeant. Uh, with that, who would you like to pin your badge? Is that it? Congratulations, Harry. Good luck. Are you guys going to stay or, uh, for the next presentation, or you want to excuse yourself? Your call. Your call. Item 5B is a presentation. Presentation on the proposed purchase of Sugar Bush Elementary School building and grounds from Anchor Bay School District. For this, we will call up Michelle Vanderson. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, we are offering this option to the Township Board for a decision tonight. Uh, Director Sonnenberg and I will be reviewing two aspects of this decision within our presentation. The condition of the building and then the impact on the community from each of our individual perspectives for our departments. Um, this is how we're gonna break it down tonight into these four um, multi-step processes here. The Chesterfield Township community and surrounding area is filled with potential for programming and events. Expanding the usable space allows Chesterfield Township to meet the needs for increasing recreational activities as the community grows in size. Uniquely, Chesterfield Parks, Recreation, and Senior Services is able to service all areas in various programs that cater to each individual age group everywhere in between. 
Public parks and diverse recreation services are vital to the national effort to provide safe, healthy avenues for youth to explore common interests. Access to affordable programs and places for active recreation is critical to the health and wellness of the Anchor Bay area, including Chesterfield Township and its residents. A community recreation center provides an a resource for community pride. It brings people together. It also, it also provides opportunities for interaction, inclusivity, community learning, as well as contribute to the economic development of the surrounding region. For a community to reap the benefits of parks and recreation areas fully, these places must be centrally located, provide adequate programming, as well as have accessible amenities. Including, including in this list is public outdoor space and play areas for everyone to enjoy. Many surveys of the Chesterfield Township residents show that adults place high value on parks and recreation services within their home community. With a population of 46,000 and growing, Chesterfield Township is one of the most populous municipalities in Macomb County without a designated recreation center. For more than 40 years, Parks and Recreation has operated within limited, confined, minimally maintained, inadequate facilities for a community of its size. Currently, activities are at maximum capacity within the Senior Center and, is the, and utilizing the least community center space. Previously used functioning youth center had several limitations, including the parking lot, structural concerns, and safety of the location in reference to Selfridge Air National Guard Base. The proposed community center space in the Sugarbush Elementary building provides all of the space needed with room for improvement and future building renovations as the community requests. It's important to note that Chesterfield Township has been operating at a diminished capacity in recreational opportunities due to both lack of staffing and lack of functional facilities up until this opportunity. Starting in fall of 2022, utilizing the lease space has provided significant increase in our programming through enhancement and new creation. Recent additions to staffing has be, have begun to balance that scale. Um, it's allowed us to add additional work to be done to bring in quality programs and up-to-date processes. Uh, we're not the first community to get, a place, get to a place where it's time to expand offerings and align with the size of a growing community. Specifically, in the past several years, community have been putting have been putting funding towards recreation improvements, including recreation centers and community centers specifically. We'll go over later in the presentation a couple examples as we look at the building specifics. This unique opportunity for us checks several boxes from the master plan. The Chesterfield Township 2023 to 2027 master plan highlights the need and desire for connectivity through the township. Connecting Sugarbush Road to Jefferson Avenue enhances the outdoor recreation opportunities in addition to the building space. Specific advantages for the Sugarbush Elementary building include flexibility of building use, addition of outdoor land, and existing structures that are already in place for us. School buildings provide that structure that provides plentiful storage, which is easy for us to use. It also establishes that, that parking lot that's already there, as well as maintain technology infrastructure that the schools utilize. Transferring from a school to a community center is a natural fit with a sturdy building foundation to continue operational programs and grow into additional offerings. This particular space is set in a residential area. It's accessible to local residents and within a reasonable driving distance for a majority of residents. Within the established subdivision, it's encouraging to be able to maintain the green space of the land extending to Jefferson Avenue over alternative developments. Continued options for the community partnership or alternative uses keep the ability to adapt to our current township residents and those are, that are at the forefront of our decision making. Uh, Director Sonnenberg is going to take us through the details of this specific location and take a deeper dive into the facility side. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I won't be as smooth in my presentation, I apologize. My presentation skills are I'm more the building guy than the presentation guy, but I'm going to do my best. So um, we are going to walk you through some of the details and the time we've spent doing our internal in investigation of this building and facility just to kind of give you, our goal was to capture as much detail as we could and share those details so you could make an informed decision. So the first thing that was done was two appraisals were done of the facility. One was done by Anchor Bay School District, that's the one you see. 
There was about 50 plus pages in that report. That full report was passed along to the board and that was the total amount that they came up in that appraisal. The next, the second appraisal was done by Chesterfield Township, about a 104 page document. We're not gonna go through the whole document. I just wanted to kind of point to the number. At the total at the end of the appraisal, highest and best use was 2.5 million. Next, we went through the next six slides will be a breakdown of other community centers. Now this by no means says we need a community center the size of Farmington Hills, but what it does do, it paints a picture of other communities, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and on the top you'll see the construction cost and the square foot of each facility. So I just wanted to run throughs to give you some comparables, references that are local. In those other appraisals, they didn't do a really good job of capturing some of the other facilities that we actually walked and looked at, so I wanted to share those with you. So this is, apologize, sorry. This was Farmington Hills. This was a high school. It's large in size. It's approximately 244,000 square feet. They spent about $27 million in the project, and it's a large, large facility. But it's well done. It's got, all, it's got every detail imaginable. By no means are we looking at something this size. We're just trying to provide you something to show you the cost and size of facility. Sterling Heights is another one. Um, they spent, it's 98,000 square feet, and they spent approximately about $24 million in the facility. Once again, a newer facility, it's amazing. All the details are there, they did a really nice job. It's local. Another one that's local is Macomb Township. 25 million on that facility, and it's 92,000 square feet. And I'm, some of you might have attended that facility. I know we captured some data to see how many Chesterfield residents actually use that facility, just as we talk through our process. Um, and they built the original facility. They were so successful that they expanded. Next, we looked at some smaller facilities. This is um, in Ypsilanti. They've taken an old school building, and they have about $30 million set aside for the project. $15 million in state funding, $3 million in federal funding, and the rest in COVID funding to fund this project. Locally, too, there's another um, smaller facility in Marysville, they took an old fire station and they converted it to a community center. And now they just applied for a grant. They wanna add on 6,000 square feet and they're asking for $2.5 million to add on 6,000 square feet to that facility. This one I kinda wanna get into a little more detail. This is, the Shelby, this is the Shelby Activity Center. This center was a former boys and girls club. It is, we toured it, it's local, it's close. And it's kind of the most relatable one that we saw through our eyes because it was an existing facility and they um, transferred it over to a community center. Pretty straightforward and simple, but well done. So as a comparison, just I just wanted to do a one page comparison so you could kind of see on one page the difference between the Shelby Center and our center. So you can see on the left, we'll just run down the details, kind of breaks down our Sugarbush Elementary and on the right is the Shelby, used to be the Boys and Girls Club. Obviously, on our piece of property, you can see the parcel outlined in yellow. There's approximately 18 acres of property. Uh, Shelby on the right has about eight acres. Our building is 58,000 square feet. Shelby's was 25,000 square feet. Our building was constructed in 1975. There's in 1997. And then our building went through a series of renovations. And then on the bottom, you can see the purchase price. Now, be mindful that after Shelby, purchased this building, they did a $1.3 million renovation. And those details were also shared in the package that was sent to the board. Next slide. Now we're gonna get into the assessment of the building. Um, we had partnered, partnered with partners <laughs> on this part. And um, so we're gonna, go into a, we're gonna go into a deeper dive on this. We broke it up into sections. So the first section, we, the first part, Chesterfield Township did. What we did is we, as soon as we started leasing the building, we went to Anchor Bay School District and we got a copy of every print, print and plan for the building. What we did with those prints and plans is I went through and I made a 3D model of every print and plan. What you can do is you pull a three-dimensional floor out of the building. What this does for us is it gives us a ton of details. When I look at square footage of floor space, when we look at square footage of wall space, it's all electronic. We can hit a button and find those details out. I show the picture on the left just because when you zoom down in that model, you can see doors, handles, there's just a lot of detail. So I just wanted to share with that. That was one of the things we did internally just to kind of start this process. We took that model 
We rolled that into a document that we captured as soon as we started leasing the building. We wanted a document, it's called a control document. So we know the condition of that building we walked in. Whether we purchased it or not, if we left that building, we could have a record of what that building was when we walked in. So we use this document not only as a control document for our lease, but also we put room numbers in our work order system so we can track our work orders and how they were performed at this building. And we also used it as a programming guide and a map for the facility. This map only shows, and just like the previous map, we really just highlighted on the 27,000 square foot portion of the building that we use. This next slide was also presented in the board package. This is, we had a 3D photographic model done. Luckily, we have a, a local businessman who did this for us. It was fantastic. It's a great tool. So what it does for us is once we have the 3D drawing, we can go in. Those prints were from the time that the building was originally built and the updates. So let's say from the early 90s and early 2000s. They don't show any changes that were done internally. What this, what this did for us is we were able to go in and walk the building in a 3D model and you can measure, take the take details. This is kind of a zoomed in version. We can drop pins where the electrical services are. We can go in and measure drawer lengths. I mean, it, it provides a phenomenal amount of information for us when we're looking at project planning in the future. It also, the other added benefit that Michelle shared with us is she was surprised how many people, they have a link to this on their website if you want to go there. You can literally walk through the building. So many people that rent this building that aren't able to come out and look at the facility, they can go in, they can walk the building, they can measure the room size. She says it gets used frequently on the Parks and Rec, Rec website, sorry. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Mike and he's gonna speak about the detailed assessment that we partnered up with them to do. We really wanted to get with them because seeing their reports in the past and we sent that to the board as well, you'll see how much detail was put into this report. Thanks, Josh. Um, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Mike Malone with Partners in Architecture. I'm one of the principals of the firm. Uh, I live in the township right down the street actually. So. Uh, this is very near and dear to my heart and um, any, any work we do with the township. So um, I'll get into the objective that we were tasked with. Uh, we were hired, I believe, in October of last year uh, to kind of take a big picture look at the, the entire facility. Um, so our objectives were kind of identifying current deficiencies and um, long-term needs. So, so we created a list of, of items. Uh, which I'll, I'll get into here in a moment. Uh, but we, we use this tool uh, in many, many municipalities, many school districts. We've, we've done hundreds of buildings this way. Uh, it really gives you a high level overview of, of what you're getting into or, or what your ex possible expenditures could be. Um, and we, we, we prioritize, prioritize those items uh, based on three categories, one through three, one being the highest level of need, three being something you could put off for a while. Uh, we've established a rough order of magnitude cost, uh, so every one of these items, uh, <clears throat> we, we assemble some quantities based on our observations, measurements, pictures, and so forth. Uh, we establish a, a unit price and then uh, a possible cost to address those deficiencies. Um, our objective was to report this back to the township, which uh, we're here to do, and then uh, our hope is that you would use this uh, report as a uh, a tool for your capital improvement plans if you do choose to, to purchase this facility. Uh, so the areas that we looked at, and this is typical in every report that we do for a facility such as this, uh, we looked at site conditions, so anything outside parking lots, uh, drainage, concrete curbs. Um, we did, we, we kind of looked at the playground equipment, but that really wasn't our main charge here. Uh, just an overview of the site, uh, the roof, so we walked the roof, uh, the entire building, photographed it. Um, the entire exterior of the building, windows, doors, walls, uh, there are some deficiencies there which we'll highlight. Uh, the building interior, uh, mechanical systems and electrical systems as well. Uh, the three priorities as I stated, one through three, uh, one being the highest level of need or we call it an immediate need. Uh, and we look at those, those items as a, a one to three year window. So you know, something that's ready to fail or has failed, something that you should address to keep water out of the building, those items will be in category one. Um, mechanical equipment that's approached its useful life, uh, that would be in a category one. 
two and three are, are kind of self-explanatory, four through six years in the two category and seven through 10 um, in the three <coughs> category. So this is kind of like a 10 year outlook of your facility. Uh, the report looks like this, this wasn't meant to read. Um, it's, a, it's a big spreadsheet, every category, which I'll, I'll kind of describe here. Uh, the way it's organized is, is by category. So the first category here is, is site conditions. Uh, every, every item has a, a number, so, um, you know, I can't really read what that one says there, but this is dealing with the parking lot. So the description of the deficiency would be in this column, the location, this is the main parking lot, the photographs, we have several photos that we incorporated in the report. Our priority level, red being one, that's the highest level of need again. Uh, the recommended action, um, <clears throat> and then uh, the next page. Uh, so this spreadsheet continues, you know, this, this line item here. Approximate quantity, so this was roughly 12,100 square feet. Uh, approximate unit price, $7 a square foot. You get a, a total of, I think it says 84,000. Sorry, I can't see that far. Um, and then the total estimated cost is down here, 122,000. Why is that different from 84 to 122? Well, that's a burden cost. So that, that cost actually has uh, markups on it, contingencies, fees, so forth. So that's like a, a pretty good picture of what that line item could potentially cost. Um, now this isn't really exactly like a menu. You don't just pick item one, five, and nine, um, add those up and that's your project. You, you, you know, we would wanna revisit this uh, package, a scope of work that's appropriate. If we're gonna do site work, let's do most of the site work or all the items so you can get the best bang for the buck. Uh, but this gets you a, a pretty good picture of uh, approximate costs. And the priorities, they're, they're labeled here. So the priority one cost, there's a column that goes all the way down and there's totals at the bottom of every single category. So a uh, quick overview of how the report is laid out. Uh, there are some limitations to the report. So this is, this is a broad overview of, our, of the facility, right? We didn't do any destructive testing whatsoever. It's all based on observations, drawings that we're able to, to gather from, from Josh and the school district. Um, it's not all inclusive. We did the best we could, but I'm sure there's items that we may have missed. Um, and we didn't deal with any hazardous materials. And I, and I believe uh, the, dist or the township has a, a report on that separate from this. Uh, so these next slides are just a sampling of some of the photographs of of what's in the report and some of the deficiencies, and I'm just gonna highlight a couple on each category. So for the, the site work, uh, it's really the, the biggest thing here is deteriorated parking and drive areas, uh, heaving and damaged concrete sidewalks, um, and some curbs, and site drainage. You know, here's the side of the building. There's a lot of water accumulating close to the foundation of the building. There's actually holes, you know, that, I don't know, six to eight, 10 inches deep next to the building where the, the drains are just pouring into the, the ground. Not a good thing, we, sh we need to address that. Um, alligator parking lots, you, you've all seen these. Um, it's just a matter of time, you know, of, of how those will deteriorate quicker over time if they're not addressed. Uh, approximate site costs, uh, priorities one through three, about $670,000. <coughs> Roofing. Uh, the roofing isn't in horrible condition by any means, but um, there are some, some things that need to be addressed. There was a tremendous amount of debris on this roof, roof drains clogged and so forth, um, easily addressed uh, for really little to no cost. Um, there's ponding water right here. I think there's probably a plug drain in this corner, uh, but this is water if you can kind of see it there. Um, and then there's a small portion of metal roof. It's kind of like a barrel vault roof. It's a steel roof, it is rusting, so you know it's, it's not a big quantity, but we would recommend uh, replacing that. It's, it's gonna fail at, at some point. All the roofing costs are about $2 million. Exterior envelope, so you know the most important portion of the facility is the exterior of the building, keeping the water and the moisture out. Uh, the roof is one of those components, but also the walls, doors, windows. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a steel column here which supports a, an overhang. Uh, rusted at the column base here, um, easily fixed, but you know if ignored, it, it could fail over time. Um, there's a, a series of these stone aggregate fascia panels around the perimeter of the building. They're all cracked and, and split, and these could actually fall off the building at some point if not addressed. Uh, so we'd want to deal deal with those, of course. 
Uh, there is a, a bunch of cracked and damaged masonry cracking through the, the exterior, which is typical of a building uh, such as this. Um, nothing crazy uh, to be worried about, but it should be addressed to, to keep the water out again. Uh, and there is a broken louver. I think I have a picture, yeah. So here's some, here's some of the cracked masonry. So we have some stepped cracking. There's a, a stone coping at this portion of the building, which is actually dislodged. This is loose, it could you know, fall off the building, not a good thing. Uh, one of the louvers that was you know, serving one of the unit ventilators, uh, critters can, can get in there, obviously not a good thing. Uh, this is one of the, the masonry enclosures, I think this is the dumpster enclosure. Uh, a lot of moisture infiltration in that, in that whole assembly, so generally at the top of the wall is probably the, the point of failure, just needs to be addressed, cleaned up, so it, it doesn't get compromised any further. Um, as we get into the interior, now the, the interior is fairly good condition. The finishes are, you know, were recently updated, I think in uh, probably early 2000s. Um, not horrible by any means. We didn't really address like, hey, we need to replace this carpet or tile or whatever. Those are items you're going to want to do at some point based on the, the end use of each, each of the spaces. Uh, but there's, you know, minor items, you know, masonry cracking. I'm sorry, flipping forward here. Like right here is a horizontal crack through the masonry, vertical crack here. Again, that could easily be addressed. Some delaminating plastic laminate counters, some epoxy flooring that was placed over ceramic tile is, is starting to fail. Not a big deal, easily addressed, but something we wanted to point out. Uh, we've only covered about $131,000 in interior needs. Again, it's not a facelift. It's not a complete renovation. These are just observations based on the, the deficiencies that we've noticed as, our, as part of our walkthrough. Uh, mechanical, this is probably your biggest area of need. Um, all the equipment in this facility is really beyond its useful life. Uh, the building was originally built in 75, but there were renovations in 94 two, and in 2000, and I think 2004 or five. Um, so a lot of this equipment is, is really beyond its useful life. You know, 20, 30 years of what you could expect out of these boilers. Uh, one of these boilers was being serviced as, as we were actually walking through the building. Um, a rooftop unit, some you know, exhaust fans are, are beaded, beaten, battered, and you know, they're, they're probably limping along, but at some point uh, they'll need replacement. Uh, approximate $4.4 million of mechanical work projected over the next 10 years. Uh, electrical, uh, the biggest thing we, we noticed here was really lighting. Uh, electrical systems appear to be working fine. Distribution appears to be fine uh, based on the, the use of the, the current spaces. Now, if, if we reconfigure any parts of the building, obviously there'll need to be some upgrades for you know, redistribution of power and lighting panels and distribution panels and so forth. But the lighting is all fluorescent, uh, you know, T8 light fixtures. So those should be upgraded at some point to LED, much more energy efficient. Uh, there are some damaged fixtures outside the building, uh, again, easily addressed, <coughs> about $550,000 in uh, mechanical, I'm sorry, that says mechanical, but that means it's supposed to be electrical, sorry about that. Uh, so the estimated cost, um, again, just to reiterate, these are based on our approximate quantities, so we, we did, you know, do our best to count things up and, and um, use our drawings to get square footages and lineal footages to calculate these numbers. Uh, the costs are in, in 2023 slash 2024 dollars. So, you know, if, if any of this work was planned to be, you know, in 2026, uh, escalation would need to be accounted for and added into these numbers. And the subtotal cost of that first line item I showed you of the asphalt parking, uh, there's actually a 45% markup on each unit cost. So. What, what makes up that 45% is, is a design contingency, and that's really, a, you know, the, the, the scope isn't completely laid out yet, it's approximate, so that, that accounts for some of extra work that may be necessary. Uh, construction contingency, as you know, any construction project, you're gonna wanna carry a, a contingency. At this point in the game, we would say 10%. Um, you know, contractor markups, general conditions, and whether it's a CM or a contractor, there would be fees associated with their overhead and profit, approximate you know, architects and engineering fees, gives you a total of 45%. So we're trying to give you a picture of a total project cost. 
Uh, the costs summarized by priority. Uh, priority ones, that's all the categories we showed you, $5.8 million. Priority two, 1.4 million. And priority three, 1.2 million for roughly eight, eight and a half million dollars. Uh, again, this is a 10 year projection uh, for deficiency needs. Uh, so that's the, the summary of the, of the assessment, uh, high, very high level. Um, and the next slide uh, is, is actually um, <clears throat> comparing that investment to a potential new facility cost. Uh, Josh had shared some examples of previous um, renovations or, or new buildings in other communities. Um, some of those costs are are from several years ago. Some of those costs are probably don't include total project cost. Um, so if we were to rebuild this facility, same size, it wouldn't be the same configuration or, or so forth, but approximate cost could be in the you know, 28 to $30 million range for a, a 58,000 square foot facility. Now that's total project costs, got contingencies in there, fees, all that stuff. So it's not just bricks and mortar. Good enough. Um, yeah, I'd just like you to expand, you know, because I know that's a big number when people look at that number and kind of like we had a discussion about some of his local projects and why that number is so high. Yeah. So because of the current construction market, I guess I just would like you to expand on. Yeah, and, and, and since since COVID's hit, hit in like, you know, 2020, most of those projects were prior to, prior to that. Um, I think the Macomb Township project was 2004 at $25 million. Um, the, the prices have skyrocketed, you know, since 2020 into 2024. They've kind of leveled off and, and I guess they're more normal, but they really haven't gone down. Uh, the material prices have stabilized, but the, the labor costs are still increasing. Uh, we're, building, we're building facilities like this or even smaller than this, you know, new firehouses, police, public safety, school buildings, well north of $500 a square foot just pure construction costs, not, not all the added, you know, contingencies and, and fees and so forth. So um, th this cost is based on uh, 335 to $360 a square foot. That's construction cost, okay? So then there's contingencies and all that on top of that. So this may look like a huge number, but this is a, this is a, real, a real number. It's, it's, it's close uh, in, our, in our professional opinion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, a couple more slides before I turn it back over to Michelle. While we're talking numbers, one of the numbers I want everyone to consider um, when we make this purchase and move forward, if, you just, if the board decides to make this purchase and move forward, is every building has a general basic baseline operation cost. So this cost, we looked at Anchor Bay High School's last couple years of utility use. This cost is based on taking the full building as is. Obviously, in the future, there would be some energy saving, uh, you know, um, items addressed, and we would move forward to lower this number. But right now, for the first two years of operation, as we move forward, all in, we're looking at about $164,396 for baseline operations. So what that means is water, gas, electric. We consider internet now an essential service, so that's in there. Um, lawn, snow, alarm insurance and janitorial of course and we even added in the janitorial supplies so just want you to be mindful of that number when we move forward um, so this next section of the report I'm going to go through a couple of slides before I turn it back over to Michelle so this next step in our process uh, we just wanted to touch on some of the future vision that we've been looking at as we go through this process so as seen in the operational slide I mentioned that we have a two-year look ahead and in those two years we basically plan on keeping the building the current building the current status and baseline maintenance as you saw in the operational cost as we go through our due diligence and we plan for the next phase um, we're going to prepare plans and future options for the township board to approve we would come back in the next two years and talk about those options those options really hinge on partners so we'll go through a slide I broke down kind of a four point thing that we're looking at. Um, we also want to, moving into that next step, we're going to align the financial planning with long-term solutions. So we'll know at that two-year point 
okay, long term, this is where we're going to be, and this is what this building could look like. And what I mean by that is the initial concepts are like four things we're looking at. We're looking at shared and modernized space, the possibility of additional gym. And that means, when I say additional gym, you'll see in one of our drawings, that means demoing the old part of the school and putting a gym in where, that, where the footprint of that school is. It doesn't mean adding on to the building. Right-sizing a portion of the building, maybe we tear a portion off of this section of the building we don't need, and occupying the entire building. So I apologize about this slide, but I just wanted to give you guys um, a little bit of insight when we go back to the word modernizing. So this is actually Brandenburg Park. And the reason why I put this slide up here is I wanted to show you a simple way to modernize a building that was built about that time. Because this building was a this building was built about the exact same time. Buildings then they used to put in an eight-foot drop ceiling at standard height. But when you open up the ceiling, like we did at Brandenburg, you'll see in that drawing above, that was actually done by the library when they did their study. So right now, our drop ceiling in that building is at eight foot. But if you tear down that ceiling, like we did at Brandenburg Park, and you open it up to structural steel, which is a look when you go to those new community centers we saw earlier, that is typical standard building. It's a nice look. It's a studio look. It's open. It's a lot of value at low cost. So what we would do is tear the ceilings out, that gets our ceiling up to 10 foot, deck up to 12. So now you go from an eight foot ceiling to a 12 foot ceiling, it really opens up the space. So I just wanted to share with, that's one of the things that we're considering when we move forward. Also, on some of the shared partnerships, as you know, we spent a lot of time going through um, our initial conversations with the library. Spent a lot of times going to board meetings, um, came up with several concepts, we had several discussions, and we were hoping that we would see a partnership through with them, but there's other people in, in line kind of that's approached us. Like for example, I just wanted to share this with you. There's a, a group that wants to make indoor pickleball suites. Basically with the classrooms they sit now, they scrape the floor, they put a pickleball court in dot, indoors. Each classroom becomes, well two classrooms together become one pickleball court. And they can't build them fast enough. I even hate to use the word pickleball because the minute I say it, people are calling wanting them tomorrow. So I just wanted to share that there is a whole host of options, but what we need to do now is we need time. Like I said, this is step one. Step two, we need time to go through all these options. Another thing we consider, going back when we talked about gym space. So I apologize about this drawing. It's a, a rendering we did, and this goes back to the ability of having everything computerized. When someone comes to us and says, hey, we got this idea, we can throw it in our uh, building software and change and make a model right away. This model that we put together shows a couple things. One. If we were to demo the old school space, you could use that footprint. Now, granted, the walls aren't high enough, but you could use that footprint to build a full-size basketball court with a walking path. We showed it as two just to show you the amount of space that's on that side of the building. Now, that's not an expansion. It's reusing the existing footprint. Those are one of the items we want to talk about as well as we go through this process. So I'm going to turn it back over to Michelle. The Parks and Recreation and Senior Services staff look forward to the near future where we can plan ahead for years to come. We'll have a place to call our own. The long-term addition of the Chesterfield Community Center will provide the anticipated opportunity of a thriving Parks and Recreation Department. As our staffing and space restrictions align and come together, the community needs that Chesterfield Township has will see an increase in the number of quality offered programs and events. Summer camp, youth sports leagues, community-wide events, and multiple faceted programs will soon have a space to call home. Looking ahead at step two of this process, beyond those two years of planning, we can take time to decide on the next best step. What we're doing is creating a two-year runway to make a well-informed decision for this community asset. Several options are on the table with our enhanced facilities, including it could be a millage, it could be a shared space, it could be a gymnasium, it could be a multi-purpose space. Uh, beyond those initial years, it could shape into a community space that we build to tailor, where we have a teen hangout, a larger children's area, or a partnered space where, for businesses or adults to lease from us. Following a long-term decision of providing the community space required, a decision on best use of the space can be made. Residents will benefit when a suitable location to establish a recreational foundation for our community is found. We've seen the realistic picture of acquiring this building, and in the incredible green space that comes with it. Even as the building stands today with no major renovations complete, it gives Parks and Rec a place to 
to run programs and it's an incredible opportunity for recreation in this town. The Parks and Recreation Commission has put hours of work into this decision over the last several years on top of the in-depth research from Chesterfield Township staff and the contractors that Josh went over today. It's certainly not a spur of the moment decision, but rather a culmination of years of need coming into a place where real change can be made. Bringing it back to the decision before the board today, I remind you that this is step one in a multi-step plan. The community will be able to assist, in, assist us in making decisions along the way on how this asset will be utilized and where they wanna go with the township board leading, leading as those decision makers on behalf of the residents. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> I'll, uh, any questions from the board? I'll entertain some uh, Michelle and the staff if there are some quick questions from board members. Trustee Joseph. Thank you. I'll um, I'll save the balance of my questions and for the debate that we have on the actual. But I just in prepping for that, I just was curious at a couple of things. Um, community centers been. Uh, active for a year and I know in the first part of your presentation Ms. Vanderson you mentioned that um, we were able to hire additional staff and offer additional programming and I was curious with the community center being operational for a year um, what what kind of increased revenue have you seen uh, over the course of the last year with all the new programming and staff and you know the enhancements that we've been able to provide mm -hmm. so our, our staff that we added were part-time staff to to be in the community center space in the evening and the weekends. Um, revenue came from both programming and from renting the, the facility because we offer rentals for the community as well. I did not provide an exact number because there's a little bit of a, um, where we were in the space and growing into it and so I didn't provide them. Was it just ballpark uh, substantial revenue enhancement as a result of the new space and programming? Yeah, certainly several, several thousand dollars that we've seen in just several programming thousand. alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, the other question that I had is probably more for Mr. Sonnenberg, um, but the, um, sorry. sorry. No, that's okay. Um, first, great presentation. I think um, what I most appreciated, um, well, there was a ton to appreciate there, but I like, I like the inclusion of the annual costs, uh, the, the F&O costs associated with that. It wasn't something that um, has been very well detailed, and I like the way that you broke that down, so thank you for that. Um, in terms of the two-year plan, um, and basically we're just going to try, as I understood the presentation, we're just going to try to utilize the building as is for the most part with nominal, um, you know, repairs for a two-year and then look at all of the options. What do you do with the, um, the items that were detailed by partners in architecture where they, um, and, and their appraisal and their engineering assessment was a little bit different than the one I was accustomed to with the library in that they actually broke down um, repairs that are needed over the next 10 years, one to three, and so forth. From just napkin math, you roughly have about 60% of the costs associated today's dollars in the first one to three years. Um, significant issues uh, totaling $5.8 million. What do we do in the two-year pause when we come upon a system that has outlived its usefulness um, or, or its life expectancy as we know that a number of these mechanical systems have, what do we do from a cost standpoint if we have one of those uh, $5.8 million expenditures, a sizable one that we must repair, say like an HVAC or heat exchangers or things that are electrical in nature that make the building unsafe, what pot of money do we take it from now um, to, to make that repair during the two-year pause? Great question. Sorry, oh, great question. So that was a concern, and obviously when we were doing this report, we looked at all the details. And I do want to share with you that some of those details that we noticed in the report, Anchor Bay has went, I'll give you a couple examples. One, they spent about $17,000 repairing the chillers. So they wanted to make sure when they passed along the building it wasn't in, in need of repair. They spent $13,000 recently rebuilding the boiler. So some of those critical si systems that we were worried about, they are making strides. It's an active school, they have to keep it active. I equate it to, I guess, like looking at this building with the renovation that we're doing now. 
our systems and equipment are from the early 90s, just like that building. We're able to keep it alive and on um, in fairly good working order. Now, if there is an emergency situation, to your point, we would have to come back to the board. But I do feel like when we were looking at the equipment, what's nice about partners' list is it's so detailed. What it helps us do is now that we have a detailed list, we go in and we start planning sensible renovations or partnerships. Our hope is, really our hope is, the partnership part of it. If we could bring somebody in to take a portion of that building, why would we start remodeling and changing it if someone comes in and they take a portion of that building and they find the best use for it? So in this two-year period, our goal is really less than two years is to come back to the board and say, hey, we have a great foundation here. What's great about Partners Report is it takes our capital plan, it takes all of our minor expenses. I got, he's got details in there where every single doorstop and door sweep that's missing is covered in his report. There's a lot of things that we have in there. So I feel comfortable that if we didn't have that assessment, I would be a lot more nervous than I am today. But I will say, I, no one can 100% say that nothing will break. Oh, I, I believe it will um, only because I'm looking at your reports from this building. So we've heard um, really, uh, and, and just, just this facility alone is, is a 35-year-old facility, and we um, have millions and millions and millions of dollars that we borrowed uh, because of the dire consequences of not, you know, uh, and, and so you have a building that's even 15 years older than that, and there is nothing in the general fund that takes on that level of responsibility. So again, I'll save a, a balance of this, but um, the, the last question I had for you is you did a very nice job of comparing uh, other communities um, and the community centers or rec centers that other communities have. And um, I'm just wondering, maybe you could take, uh, if I'm wrong, tell me, as you went down each one of them, uh, I noticed that every single one of those communities has a separate parks and rec millage, um, bar none. There were, there were no multi-million dollar facilities. My question to you is, assuming that the appraisals that, that are, you know, seem to be uh, consistent with one another, the school did one and the township did one, I don't have necessarily an issue with the cost of the building, but the comparison between you know, this purchase and a new building, this purchase as is with 10 million or 8 million over the next 10 years, or the cost of a new, the numbers are a little bit, uh, library came in uh, pretty close to where partners did saying about $500 a square foot on average. All of those decisions are made with revenue in place to facilitate whichever decision you wanna go. We don't have that in this community, and I'm wondering when you come back, uh, and you will, you'll have to, uh, based on if partners knows their stuff, and I think they do, over the course of the next three years, we're looking at millions of dollars of repairs. They say 5.8 over the next three. Um, we don't have anything in place for that, and I think we're doing it backwards. I think that what we should do is guarantee from the voters, from the residents, that this is something that they would like to see and then we can have a debate about whether buying um, an older building and refurbishing or constructing from new. But to do it the other way makes me feel like in about six months, nine months, a year, somebody's gonna be at that podium and saying, what do you want us to do? Put the seniors out in the cold? The heat is failing. We don't have anything in the general fund um, earmarked for magnitude of this expenditure and so it's premature to talk about rehab versus why, why did you not include the other communities that all have millages to facilitate these uh, programs in this building? I'm just curious. Well, a couple of things. First, I, I, I'm not really in the position to speak on the funding part of it. I mean, that is at a board level where we decide whether it's parks or millage or not. Sure. The other part of it is um, I know when we came to a lot of the people or a lot of the slides I included where when I reach out to the community and friends and family and Parks and uh, Rec Commission members and others, those were always the facilities that came up. You know, those ones, the Macombs, the ones they were familiar with. So that's why I started with those and used those. But to your point about the funding, I think the biggest driver was this, I'll be honest with you, part of it could be is that if we didn't have um, with the ARPA funds available, we might be having this conversation years down the road, but right now with the ARPA funds available, 
it's, it's an opportunity. So that's why we call this step one in a multi-step process. Josh, in terms of the ARPA funds, and this is my last question, Mr. Supervisor, in terms of the ARPA funds, and I appreciate this funding isn't your deal, the ARPA funds are really a drop in the bucket compared to the total cost. You, you, you can look at uh, an electrical system or some of the higher ticket items that partners illustrated, um, which would, would be, you know, just, 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 just the enhancements that are required in the next 10 years, three times the ARPA funds. The investment isn't, isn't uh, in question. Uh, as I said, the appraisals are clearly in line with one another. I don't think that we're being taken in terms of the amount of land and the building even as is. The question is, how do you fund it on a, on, a, on a prolonged basis when the front end tells us that we're looking at millions and millions and millions of dollars immediately over the next three years? And every single community that you referenced has a parks and rec dedicated millage. Um, and so the question is not, not in debate. They have annual funding because their residents have said. And in terms of the Parks and Rec Commission, I know the amount of work that's been done and I appreciate all of that. Um, and that this, these communities keep coming up. Um, I, I have a neighbor that has a really, really nice sports car. And I like that too. And then I look at what my bank account is and I realize why I don't have one. And I think that on a, on a bigger scale, we should do the same thing here. Before we commit to a building, and again, I realize this isn't your issue, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'll save it for my fellow board members, but um, making sure that I understood and didn't miss something. There are no communities out there with a 20 or $30 million complex that don't have funding in place. Is that a fair statement? Um, I'm not exactly sure on what, it, what communities when it comes to the funding, but I, what I will say is we're, that's why we're looking at a 2.5 or six, $8 million building instead of a $25 million building. We're really starting off with, a, with simple steps on something we can afford, something we can grow into. It's an opportunity, and I just think it's, it's not on the same scale as some of those other ones, I do agree. But to your point, the funding is will come from you and the board and you guys can make that decision. We're just here to provide you information so you can make an informed decision. I'll gladly donate part of mine, Thank but you. my salary is 10,000 a year. I can't cover much. So it doesn't come from the board, it comes from the people. And they, don't, they haven't indicated with any significance, again, probably more appropriate for our discussion. Thank you, Mr. Sonnenberg. Thank you, Ms. Vanderson. Any further questions from the board? Thank you for your presentation. I am six department reports. Are there any department reports? Trustee Domink. From Parks and Rec and Leisure Services, the Parks and Rec Department is now hiring for summer seasonal positions, including for the parks and for summer camp. The applications are being accepted on the township website. Thank you. Tre Treasurer, El Treasurer Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'm just going to go over the investment report. And um, on the first page here, um, we have the, um, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, you have a breakdown of the, the various banks that we have. Um, we have a little bit higher balance than we've normally had in Huntington, and that's due to the um, capital improvement bond T-bills. Uh, you will notice Flagstar Bank is on there. Um, as of this month, um, all of the Flagstar Bank CDs are now in CDARS. CDARS are FDIC-insured program that lets you um, access your deposits and, and keeps them in, in insured, um, to insured product available so uh, the um, department portfolio comparison uh, for that one uh, you'll just see kind of a breakdown of, of the amount that we have in each of the different um, money market J fund the CDs CD percents the Treasury bills and uh, CDRs that is as of December 31 on this page, um, you'll see that uh, the in accrued, invest in accrued interest earned in each uh, fund, so the general fund had over uh, 500000 the water and sewer fund had over 700000 public safety had over 400000 You'll see that um, the uh, general, um, the general fund, the weighted average is 4.98%, the water and sewer uh, 
weighted average is 4.15 percent, public safety is 3.63 percent, and the trust and agency is 2.95 percent. There is a note at the bottom that the ARPA funds have a cumulative interest um, accrued during the time period of 2021 through 2024 of over $200,000. Um, a big part of why there is such a steep increase is, uh, first of all, just the interest rates now are higher, and then the other part is, is that um, short-term rates are higher than long-term rates, and, and historically, most people have, you know, locked in your, um, your investments at longer periods of time for longer rates. So what I've been doing is um, T-bills and treasuries have, um, are the most secure product that we can invest in. And we've been um, t doing those at like 30 and 60 days, so those have been accruing at a faster um, interest rate. So every about 30, 60 days, we're turning over those T-bills and reinvesting them, and they're getting um, a much higher rate and at a, at a little bit faster. And um, that's with the current environment. For here, um, there's been a lot of questions lately about um, how your property taxes are broken out, so I just wanted to give you a quick update on that, and I apologize that it, the numbers are a little bit small, but um, so he, if you look at the, the um, line graph, you'll notice that there's two jumps, and one is when, uh, one is in the red, and that one is for the MISD, and the other one is in the green, and that's in Anchor Bay Schools. And that was when millages were passed, and that's really why you'll see those jumps there. Uh, this is the 2022 homestead millage rates and the, uh, what those dollar amounts actually equated to. And uh, the 2023 um, rates and dollar amounts will be available uh, in April, and so when uh, at that first April meeting, I should have those available and have you an update for that. Um, right now, we're still in the board of review and settlement process, so it takes until the end of the month for the numbers to get settled. But if you can um, take a quick look there, you'll see that the veterans that um, we, the township as a whole in 2022 sent 127,000 um, and some change uh, to the veterans. The zoo, we sent 184,000. The DIA, we, spent, we sent 381,000. Uh, here on Clinton Metro Parks, 403,000. Uh, New Haven Schools, about 1.7 million. The library received 1.180. Uh, Township uh, retained 1.47. Uh, the Smart Bus received 1.8 million. So Macomb Community College received 2.7 million. Anchor Bay Schools received over 10 million. Macomb County received over 8 million. Macomb Intermediate School District received over 9 million. State Education received over 11 million. Lance Cruz Schools over 13 million. And Public Safety received um, over 14 million. These um, last slide is a is a historical tax collection. Now this here is very difficult to read. This will be available to um, anybody that asks. Uh, as it'll get updated, I'll have the historical tax collection. That'll be included in your summer tax bills uh, so that you can have these numbers at hand uh, when that comes in uh, July. And then finally, proud to announce that the Association of Public Treasurers of the United States and Canada has awarded Chesterfield Township with an investment policy certification of excellence in recognition of the commitment to a comprehensive investment policy. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Elliott. Clerk Perry. Uh, Trustee Anders. Clerk Perry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. As many of you know, February 27th, uh, we conducted the presidential primary elections. Our turnout for that election for Chesterfield was 26.6%. Uh, that is 3% above the county average, which was 23.6% for Macomb County. Over 10,000 people voted here in Chesterfield, uh, complete in that election, 10,015 to be exact. And of those, 5,841, or approximately 58%, voted by absentee ballot. 368 voted in, during the early voting period, which was the er first early voting period mandated by Proposal 22-2. Uh, that's about 3.5%. And then on Election Day, we had 3,806 voters, which is approximately 38% of the total turnout.
Of those who turned out, the two winners of the primaries were Donald Trump with 5,375 votes and President Joe Biden won his primary with 2,476 votes cast here in Chesterfield. We do have another election for those who are in the Lance Cruz and New Haven school districts. That is coming up on May the 7th. Uh, those are both bond proposals. Language for those proposals is available at the Secretary of State's uh, Michigan Voter Information Center. There is a link to that on our website if you would like to see that. We also have that language available in the clerk's office for your review upon request. Also, the absentee ballot applications for this election will be available, uh, should be going out next week. You should be receiving them uh, in mailboxes by the end of next week or beginning of the following week. Absentee ballots will be available approximately March the 28th in the clerk's office. And that is when I would anticipate the first round of absentee ballots being mailed. That will be for everyone who has requested an absentee ballot for this election, as well as anyone who is on the permanent ballot list. Uh, as you know, if you have joined the permanent ballot list, then you will receive a ballot every election without having to file or submit a subsequent absentee ballot application. Uh, again, please remember if you are in the Anchor Bay School District, you do not have an election on May 7th. This is only for Lance Cruz and New Haven School Districts. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. Uh, thank you. At our Public Safety Advisory Committee meeting of uh, March 6, a few of, the, few of the items that were covered, we do have two of our um, uh, supervisory of officers will be retiring uh, beginning of uh, June. I want to congratulate Sergeant O'Tell on this promotion. Uh, there's four cadets, uh, police cadets currently in the academy that should be getting out soon. Uh, the township will be able, or the department will be able to recoup the, uh, uh, the cost of the academy um, program. Uh, there's two part-time firefighters are looking at uh, getting uh, getting on the on also uh, they're having oral boards uh, part-time firefighters and cadets they'll be held this coming week. We got a couple of our supervisors going to command and uh, staff school. They'll graduate in May. Uh, currently, as far as our police, our public safety building, our police department, um, uh, they're looking at uh, they're doing a final final uh, final. Uh, getting it set up as far as a dispatch. On the exterior of the building, they're looking at the um, making it water and per, uh, waterproof in the building and also structural in the interior of the building, make sure they rigid it up there. It's an old office building, done a good job of turning it into a police station. All right, thank you. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, just, uh, just a quick uh, uh, add on to the um, renovations at the PD. When we were over there for our March 6 meeting, um, Director Bassett took us uh, for a tour, and uh, I want the residents to know the, um, the dispatch center that we approved some months ago is nearing completion. Um, it is a, a really a, a very innovative and well done um, job with the uh, redesign, and I wanted to give uh, special acknowledgement to our FNO. I've been critical at times. Josh, you didn't have to pop up that fast, but uh, I, I just, uh, when we were there, um, Captain McNair was getting updates from um, Mike, uh, is McMullen? Mike? Mullins? Mullins? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mullins, um, he was sending us pictures of the uh, cabinets that you're building, and uh, they're absolutely phenomenal. It really is a, uh, an outstanding, outstanding work, and it's a, it's a very uh, interesting space. I don't know what that would cost to have custom cabinetry come in, uh, but to, to put the uh, cabinets in and to house the uh, computer and uh, all of the infrastructure that goes on, uh, which is quite massive, obviously, in a dispatch center, uh, but to see the work that you're doing and uh, the layout, you know, that, to think we can do that in-house was really a um, very, very, uh, very big compliment to you, sir, and your craftsmanship. So nice work there. Just a couple of comments from me. Uh, I've been asked by SEMCOG, Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments, uh, a government group, to uh, join their Economic Development Council. It's an appointed position. I told them that I would uh, take the appointment. Uh, we were notified from Congresswoman Lisa McLean's office. We have uh, been awarded $750,000 in community appropriation fund. This will be in addition to the funds already received that will go towards the um, Chesterfield Interceptor, and uh, 
Also, just for note, our capital improvement projects for fiscal year 2025 are being accepted by each department head. We have begun the 2025 budget process. And in your package tonight, you'll see a letter from uh, the library director, Eric Eubanks, where should we progress to the purchase of the school building tonight for our community center, um, they are interested in engaging, uh, discussing uh, use, uh, uh, uses of the building in uh, certain areas. So um, should that be a positive outcome tonight, we will, they are, uh, we'll engage them with conversation for joint use. That is all that is, I have. Um, item seven, public comments on agenda items only. There is a three minute time limit. If you would please identify yourself for the record. And again, this is for agenda items only. Mike is open. Nancy Hutchinson. Um, my first comment is real quick. I would like to thank Kathy Elliott for being proactive on Flagstar Bank taking a dump, <laughs> soon to be extinct Flagstar Bank, keeping that money safe. Um, about the school, the presentations were great, but I have, I have not seen an environmental study. Being built in 1975, there is lead paint in that building. And there probably is also asbestos in that building. When you start tearing down walls, asbestos hits the air, and it needs to go through a strict process of abatement. Wondering if anybody considered that. And? Okay, thank you, because it wasn't in the presentation. Thanks. Christopher Perrick, Testerfield Township. I got uh, a bunch of notes scribbled on here, so. I might jump around a little bit <laughs> and get a little confused. So uh, um, I'm gonna uh, comment on the uh, first agenda item about the school, uh, which uh, one of my questions is, is, who wants the school? Out of the residents, who, who wants the school and where was that data gathered? Because at the, uh, at the special township meeting held on the 29th, it was pretty apparent that nobody in, in, in attendance wanted that school except for one person. So I'm just wondering why there's a push to get the school if the residents haven't voiced that. If they had, then I'd like to know where that uh, information is. Also, um, uh, I, t I spoke with the Anchor Bay superintendent a couple weeks ago or a week and a half ago, and uh, he stated that if we were to pursue the school and take possession of it, we would take possession in July, and that would be enough time to prepare for the August primaries because the kids had to be out of the school before primaries and voting could occur. But uh, we didn't follow that rule this time, apparently. I'm just curious on uh, how we got around that requirement. Um, hazardous material not seen in the school. Was it not seen or is it not present? And then uh, waiting two years to do any kind of uh, improvements right off the, right off the bat. Well, we have uh, statements of heaving sidewalks that are trip hazards, that's a safety concern, or the potential of falling aggregate panels that could hurt somebody. So a lot of the things that were pointed out seem to be cosmetic. You're gonna put lipstick on this pig and it's only gonna last so long. So um, just my comments, thank you. Paul Lafada, Chesterfield Township. Um, I have to agree with Trustee Joseph. 
if you approve the purchase of the school tonight and I took out the 750000 uh, the board's going to put the residents of Chesterfield Township in debt by $32 million. Uh, and if you look at the uh, bill run today, we're making the interest payments on the $4.5 million bond, and the general fund is 541000 and the water and sewer fund is 152000 And there's no new revenues. Uh, our tax millage uh, percentage hasn't gone up, and our stack, state revenue sharing hasn't increased that much. So if we don't have a millage, I don't know how we're going to carry this because all we're doing is the board members are adding debt. You're adding debt, and somehow it's going to get squeezed out of the residents. But if the residents really want this school and they want parks and they want, re uh, they're going to flock to the polls and they're going to say, this is what we want. If you don't wait for a millage, which is no reason why you can't, because you can continue to lease the building, that nobody's kicking you out according to the school superintendent, I don't understand why you'd rather be s s sorry instead of safe. Uh, it's, it's a risk. Also, uh, we're not too transparent. We don't have any integrity. All these evaluations of the schools are getting approved. The cost is over $5,000, and it's not going out for approval on the agendas. No transparency, no integrity, no ethics. There's another $5,000 out. I didn't know we were going to have a Jefferson Nature Preserve Center. Another evaluation for $5,000? We don't, we don't care about policies. The only one we care about is the three-minute rule. And the, the, you know, the board is going to put the residents in debt. There's no doubt about it. And I don't understand why you can't put a millage on the August ballot. It's not that many months away. And let the residents decide before you put the residents in debt by $32 million. And there's no new revenues to cover it, guaranteed. There's no integrity, no transparency, no ethics. Thank you. I agree with uh, what this gentleman just said. I don't think it's uh, up to a some very small group of people, yourselves, to make that decision. I think this belongs to the, the voters they're the ones who's got the purse, and they're the ones who want to say where that money goes. I think a uh, senior center is very, very nice. The one in Macomb is beautiful. The one in Rochester is beautiful. These people, all these in, uh, communities also have sidewalks. We don't even have sidewalks down Jefferson, down Sugar Bush. People are walking on the gravel and stuff. So again, I think it's wants versus needs and the senior center expansion for that kind of money. I just don't think that um, it is up to this body to make that decision for me or for the other taxpayers. Ma'am, could you state your name for the record? I didn't hear it. Well, we sort of need that for our record, don't we? Okay, all right, all right. All right. Joe Cadage, live on Sutton. Uh, I don't know if anybody paid any attention, but I sent out two emails to the board detailing my thoughts on the community center and how it should be handled. Uh, first of all, I had a problem with the fact that you want to use the ARPA money, three point some million dollars, as the down payment on it. And when I went through the ARPA fund, all thousand pages of the guide, it specifically says it's used for infrastructure, it's used to uh, ameliorate damage done from a disaster. It doesn't say anything about buying a school that you're going to accue more debt because it's going to cost more money to get into it. So number one, I got a problem with that. Number two, those ARPA funds should be going to fix the infrastructure that is broken. I detailed probably $6 million worth of investment 
that you have to do to fix the water and the sewer problem. And that's just to fix it. That's not to fix the rest of the lines that are aging in that. That's the first problem I got. Second problem I have is I detailed in there. I used to do this for Ford Motor Company. I probably put in six or eight plants. I never went around and bought a plant and then go back to the, in the, the division that needed it and said, can you guys use this? You don't do it that way. You put together your plan, you figure out what it's going to cost you, what you want, and then you get a project for it. Here, the project people that would approve it would be the voters. Come out and say what you want to end up in 10 years. It's going to cost us $15 million. Tell the voters it's going to cost you, what, two mills, a mill and a half a year until it's paid for, and also how much it's going to cost you to keep running it. You're going about this bass backwards. You should get the voters' approval, unless you don't care about the next election, whether you want to stay here for the next election. Thank you. Bob Peebles, I live at 27715 Bertrand, and I've been here since 1995. Uh, I think a, a rec center and a senior center is a, a great idea. However, I think a 50-year-old building uh, with a $2.8 million purchase price and a $5.8 million renovation price for just priority level one is ridiculous. If you were looking at a home and you were going to pay $280,000 for that home and then have to put in another $580,000 just for the guts, the electrical, the plumbing, the heating, I don't know too many people who would buy that home. There's better investments for our money. Uh, someone's already mentioned that there's additional costs that aren't covered in this proposal, whether it's asbestos, whether it's mold, whether it's lead paint, any building that age is likely to have those issues, and those are not cheap issues. They're expensive. The 5.8 is just priority level one, and by their definition, that needs to be done immediately. So putting it off for two to three years, that's not going to cut it. It needs to be fixed now. I think Again, I think the idea of a community center and a rec center is great. I think the residents would enjoy it, but this is the wrong place. This is the wrong location. And I think what we end up doing is taking a liability off the Anchor Bay school system and put that liability on the township. And the Anchor Bay school system's got to be more than happy to unload that building and give it to us with all the problems that they have. And again, level one, based upon the definition I heard, was it's past its useful life and it needs to be addressed quickly. And then my last point is, I saw a number in there for electrical that it was $550,000. In a previous report, I saw electrical was nine hundred and fifty dollars to $1,275,000, a difference of almost a million bucks there. So I question that particular number as being way off the mark. And as you know, when you get involved in construction, it's going to be more than what you think. So if you think you've got a problem with these numbers, when it's all said and done, you're going to have problems that we don't have the funding for, whether it's capital or operating costs. Thank you. John Speaker, Chesterfield Township. This board is being disingenuous to the residents of uh, Chesterfield by even putting this on tonight for a vote. And what do I mean by disingenuous? There was no survey put out to get residents input on what, how the residents felt 
about the uh, community center and spending this kind of money. We're currently leasing the building. We can continue on with the lease and we haven't had any issues with leasing the building. Before any type of investment like this is made or a commitment by the uh, board, you should get residents input on it. I, I agree with Trustee Joseph 113%. Other communities have a separate parks and recs millage set up for it. All this board is doing, and I want you to realize this because I really want you to think long and hard. I know it's going to be difficult, but just try. This is a tax increase tonight on the residents. And I'm going to tell you why it's a tax increase. It's a tax increase because this is a 50-year-old dilapidated building that needs millions of dollars in repairs. There's no dispute in that. There's three separate reports out there. So the first time that the heating and cooling system goes or there's an issue, where are you guys gonna come? You're gonna come to the residents. You're gonna ask us for the money to do the repairs. That's exactly where the money's gonna come from. And then at that point, you're gonna tell the residents, well, you know what? We own the building. We're responsible to make sure that's Brad's famous line, especially for the Historic Society. Even though it's a separate entity, it comes out of the general fund now. We're responsible for the repairs. We gotta make sure that we maintain it because we don't wanna get sued. So enough of the nonsense. The residents do not want a tax increase. The residents want input, and before you even vote on this, it should, go, it should be put on the August primary and see what the residents want. You guys are putting the, you're putting the cart before the horse. It makes absolutely no sense to move forward with this ridiculous idea. And then on top of everything else, you know what? There was a presentation given tonight by our facilities and operations guy. I, as far as I, I've been told, I mean, he doesn't hold a, a plumbing's license, doesn't have a heating and cooling license. He's, no, he doesn't have an electrical background no building license that I'm aware of. So why are we taking the word of an individual that's not even, doesn't even have the qualifications or credentials to respond to the board? Thank you. All right, Mike Morton, 513 Bauer. Um, uh, real brief, I just want to uh, see if um, if there is going to be great detail on item or on, on item H uh, regarding the Polaris Ranger. I know it's a switcheroo deal going on between departments, but it does seem kind of odd having that type of vehicle for uh, the fire department. Um, other than that, I mean, going off of what everyone has been talking about regarding the school, I already know it's pretty much a done deal. You guys are all going to vote for it because you're not listening to the general public's concerns on any of this, but you yeah, might as well throw in the two cents here. Um, Trustee Joseph is 100% correct in the notion of um, talking about the revenue stream for covering such an expense, and it really showcases that, you know, even though party affiliation has nothing really to do with local politics, you all are technically Republicans, and yet uh, there seems to be a lack of actual fiscal conservatism going on with this board. More importantly, though, is the terminology for fiscal responsibility, which would indicate that if you are going to invest via governmental spending, you need to have a directed revenue stream to incorporate such uh, expenditures down the line. This would need to be something like a millage like that. Now, back 24 years ago, at the turn of the millennium, um, you can look at something like the federal government. It was projecting a surplus at the time and had a national debt of $5.6 trillion. Today, it's $34.5 trillion, and the, and, and the deficit is currently the entire spending that was going on in fiscal year 2000. I bring that example up, though, just because it showcases that back then they had fiscal responsibility and... Uh, in pursuit of what was going on in the 2000s and 2010s, 
They were focused on what they could do in the here and now, be it wars or tax cuts or uh, special spending programs or expansions in governmental bureaucracies. And that eventually led to where we are today, where our, na where our national debt is far greater than the current size of our national economy. This is what is looking like today, where it, yeah, you keep on hearing that the township's in a great financial position, but it, it seems like we've had how many multi-million dollar um, uh, spending approvals go through in just the last year alone, let alone last three or so, and they pile on to each other. Interest rates will pile on to everything, especially as interest rates continue to climb because of the federal interest rate. And then, uh, you, uh, and then you have even more on the line in the coming months that you will probably want to put on there. It's, I don't know how your financial position is, as you say it is, when you're talking about right now making a purchase that, according to everyone's math, is going to be far greater than anything we can even um, handle. Thank you. Josh Sonnenberg, 49875 Compass Point. I just want to take a moment, I don't usually do this, I apologize, but since I am a Chesterfield resident, I work here at the township, we as employees, you know, we put our heart and soul in this place. We took this job because we love the community. Used to work out in West Bloomfield, came here because I love the township, wanted to do something nice in my backyard. But what I will not stand for, and I think our group should not anymore, is these personal attacks. You don't know where I did, you don't know where I came from, so you talking about my past, I, got, I just want to share some information. So before I came here, we were, I was <laughs> head of operations and engineering for a national firm, firm called Newmark Nub, Grub Knight Frank. We were in charge of over 6,000 people across the, the country. I was in charge of writing policies and procedures. Not only did we inspect buildings, but there's a community center at Maple and Drake, 280,000 square feet. Point My order, team Mr. was- Supervisor, just, uh, this is on agenda items, and I understand Mr. Sonnenberg's interest in speaking, but perhaps it would be better at the end of the meeting. He's not speaking on an agenda item. I, I apologize. I just Speak, was trying to defend it. Anything on the school? No, I, I, I'll let the board decide that. I just don't think it's fair that the public can come up and without any information and just get appreciate, personal. That's appreciate all. it. Thank you. Hi, Sarah Arena. Uh, I am one of the Park and Rec uh, Commissioners, and I am very excited about the opportunity for the school. I have heard things, I've seen the numbers, I've certainly spent many years touring buildings, um, looking at master plans for this community and other communities in, in such a way. Um, I realize that there is money that we need to have a available to pay for certain things. I think what is being asked now for the vote is to use the money that is available to purchase property and then to have time to figure out what to do with that space moving forward. But it's an investment of property. And so if things don't work out with that property, the property can be sold. And it can be sold and the money can be brought back. And from what I understand and knowing how my taxes move around and how my home value has changed since I've moved here, I would suspect that property is going to be worth more in the next year or two than it is today. And so it could even be looked at as a property investment with the opportunity to promote health and wellness for this community. And we know that our friends and our family have physical health issues, they have mental health issues, and parks and recreation is one way that we know does not make the money back that is spent on it, but that helps the people of this community and is, is this board's job to help us as people in the communities that we live in. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Ritter, 27805 Bertrand. I've been a resident of Chesterfield. We moved here in 1988. We bought our two acres, built a home, put a pond in, loved the wildlife. But getting to our school here, the uh, Sugarbush Elementary, yes, it would be nice to have our, a community senator, center, but to purchase it is simply a cash cow with all the work that needs to be done to it 
and all the unknowns that aren't co uncovered yet. Using the ARPA funds to purchase it is a misuse of those funds. ARPA needs to be used for infrastructure and with the, all the flooding we had last year, which I was also a part of, but not because of the water or sewer. I have another situation through my property. But anyway, the infrastructure needs to be updated and fixed. That's what the ARPA fund should be used for, not purchasing Sugar Bush Elementary. Thank you. Any further comments? James Luck, I'm not gonna let my moments go. Um, what's the rush, okay? This agenda tonight, why don't you just table it? Wait till the primary, or wait till uh, the August election, put it on the August election, see if people are willing to fund this place in the, to begin with. You know, you got the money to buy it, great. You don't have the money to keep it running. The, little, the half million dollars you give to uh, the uh, rec every year isn't going to keep it going, isn't going to pay for the upkeep of it and that. Why don't you table it tonight, let the people vote on it, give you the money to actually take it and build it into something that you want. And you still have time. This money doesn't run out till the end of the year. You still got time afterwards to come back and buy the school if you must. There's no big rush on it. But, you know, you, you guys work for the people. We all say that. And everything everybody said here tonight was correct. Everybody has their opinion on it. Everybody, what they had to say is, is right. And you all know it. But you seem like you just want to spend this money right now. Wait. You can spend it later. You still have your five both votes on the board. You can get it passed then. You don't have to spend it now, tonight. Give the people a voice. That's all, the, that's all anybody here has been asking. Give the people a voice. Thank you. One time, ma'am. One time. Any further comments? What do you want? What do you want to say? Come on, time's up. Oh, my time's up now? Yep. No, the, uh -uh. the right. mic's still on. Any, my time's not up. The mic's any, still on. Any the further comments? Still on. What, what do you want to say? I'll say it for you. What do you want to say? Any further comments? What do you want to say? Stop. Ma'am, stop. we got to follow the rules. Please. Please. Okay, the only thing we Thank have you. to jeopardize is it might not go your way. Okay? Thank you. I still got, wait a minute, I still Thank got you. time. My mic is on. I got three minutes. No, you don't, sir. Your time is up. Please, when? don't make a scene. Anybody hear a buzzer? Nope. Did you Please. hear a buzzer? Sir, your time is up. Time expired. Ooh. Thank you. Any further comments from the public? <sighs> Item eight, the consent agenda. Clerk Berry. All items under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There is no separate discussion of these items. If discussion of any item is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. A, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of February 13th, 2024, and the minutes of the special board meeting of February 29th, 2024. B, approval of the bills as submitted by the finance department. C, receive and file the treasurer's quarterly report. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Treasurer Support. Elliott, supported by Trustee Vosberg. Clerk Perry. It's the other way around. Motion by Vosberg, supported by Elliott. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> motion by Trustee Vosberg, supported by Treasurer Elliott. Clerk Perry. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. 
Item nine, public hearing. So there is not a public hearing scheduled. Item 10, the regular agenda. Clerk Barry. 10A is a discussion regarding the purchase of Sugarbush Elementary School and whether to authorize the township supervisor to sign the contract for the purchase and sale of real property dated February 29th, 2024. Supervisor Kirsten will make a motion to approve. Is there any support? Support. Motion by Treasurer Elliott. Comments from the board. Comments from the board. Trustee Joseph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I won't um, rehash everything that we covered tonight, but I think there are a few key points. Um, our residents spoke. They continue to speak. I, I've yet to see 50 people show up at a meeting to say anything. And um, we had one of those meetings. Um, I, I feel um, somewhat embarrassed because uh, I've heard from a number of those meetings and a number of residents that were at those meetings and they said when we, when we held the meeting, uh, it was very close proximity to the Anchor Bay School District board meeting where they were recommending we they sell contingent on the board approval. So it was obvious that the decision for the school was made some time ago. And the difficulty with transparency is, um, well, I, again, I, I'm like him. I, I came, I wanted to be nice tonight, and it's just this place just really does something to you. But... To have two appraisals that come to us on Thursday before we, bless you, to come to us on Thursday before we meet on a Tuesday uh, with an expense of this magnitude and to see that the, the appraisals were dated over a year ago, the uh, engineering assessment that was done by partners was completed in December. You promised us in January that we would receive this voluminous report, it's been intentionally withheld and it's part of a really ugly process here. We're not listening to each other. We don't listen to our bosses. And uh, to those that went to the podium that said they, they think this is a good idea, um, Sarah, I agree with you. I think it is very much in demand, and I think there are a lot of um, seniors who deserve a community center. I, I can't argue, uh, my, my heart is in Parks and Rec. I started on the Parks and Rec Commission almost 20 years ago. I think Alan Christ was already there 30 years when I got there. So I know those meetings and I know the heart and soul that goes into Parks and Rec. And I'll actually be in, in uh, breaking with a number of, of fellow party members, but if we had a millage that went to the voters and said, this is what we need. I would just be one vote, but I would be a yes vote. But what I can't do is take that away from the residents. How, how do we take away from the residents an expenditure of this magnitude? We're not really talking about the ARPA money. We're talking about what the ARPA money buys for us. And even with, and I spent the weekend and I compared the library and the uh, partners and like the gentleman that got up, I have a number of discrepancies that I'm wondering how to engineer, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, they both arrive at generally the same conclusion and that is that you are um, looking at today's dollars, over $8 million in required repairs. And I appreciate the letter that we received from the library. Somebody must have put some bamboo under his nails because he wrote a very lovely letter saying, that the library declined the purchase because of the cost that it would, it would to, to make it a library and how the township wouldn't incur those expenses. But the reality is, is the library realizes that you can't call a school a community center and then operate a community center the next day. There are costs associated with making that a proper community center. And I'm not talking about the $8 million that was laid out. I'm just talking basic community center programming, and I know we've put a lot of that in uh, over the last year, but if we own the building and we're going to have a community center, the costs associated with running that are quite high. We're purchasing a commitment for a long time, and I, and I thought about the asset 
argument in, in terms of we are, I believe, acquiring potentially a property that's worth what it's appraised for. Right? I take no issue with that. My, my question is, what do you do if you don't have the money? How do you, how do you sell the building out? How do you sell the building out from the uh, residents who utilize the building, who come forward and say, uh, you know, my son goes to daycare there, my uh, mother goes to the senior, on and on. You're, you're not going to evict the seniors from the community center. You're just going to say, oh, well, what happened in the past? Maybe it was a mistake, but right now we have a $2 million electrical problem, and we need to focus on that. That's been the routine here since I've been in the township. It's backwards. Let's go to the voters, let's, let's go to the voters and let's say to them all of the full-throated arguments that our Parks and Rec people, I'll be screaming it too. This is why our community needs a rec center. This is why our seniors deserve a community center. I'll, I'll go door to door and I'll, and I'll make the argument uh, that I believe, what I believe, but the person who got up and said, this isn't a decision that should be made by four or five people here tonight. This belongs to our bosses. You're not spending ARPA money today. You're buying debt. You're buying decades of debt, and you're doing it without the consent, and you're pretending like this is a transactional, our relationship with Anchor Bay, we give them a few million, they give us a building, now we got a community center, we don't. We have information from uh, our trusted vendor who, I appreciated the fact he's a resident here too. We got a straight assessment and we're buying considerable debt and we're doing it backwards without the consent and using extortion down the road when we have what we know to be a problem is not going to be a valid excuse. I, I really think that we got to go to the voters first and I would appeal to my fellow board members to look at the transaction we're making tonight. We're buying decades of debt without the consent of our bosses. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. I've been pondering, is it gonna be five to two or four to, th four to three in the affirmative for this, setting that aside. Um, I support a village for uh, parks and recs, which start right from the beginning. Let's put it on, let's put it on a ballot find the right location for a, for a building. Do it that way. I mean, a supervisor even said in December, nobody wants to buy any property when we discuss selling township property. I don't know how many parcels we have. And I believe this parcel itself, uh, you had a point about, one of the speakers said about it. It could, uh, the township could hold on and make a killing at some time, possibly, or a profit. Um, believe Anchor B gets the first shot of it when I was sitting in on a meeting there. They get the first shot to buy it back at a marketable price. So. I think that kind of takes care of that. The presentation itself, um, I gotta say, I, I had vibes of Han Christian Anderson's uh, The Emperor's Clothes as that went on. Um, I do appreciate you did a good presentation, but you also did cover um, some of the issues. And uh, having gone through that, 100 and some, it was more than that, and also the library, um, their, um, their uh, their evaluation of it, there's millions of dollars possibly needed to get this building up to snuff. The bigger picture is what else is going in this township. A year ago, January, the board majority graciously accepted the Chesterfield Interceptor from the county with an $11 million bill of repairs on it that the township will be respair, uh, responsible for. You have a $16 million bond issue. It's gonna cost a million dollars a year to pay that down for the nice sewer going along county line that won't benefit the benef beneficiaries that are gonna be paying for it, and that's you. There's repairs on this building. They're outstanding. Our board majority gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, the county so the county would pay, repair the county roads with your tax, with your, your money. Um, I really question um, this entire uh, why it has to be why it has to go this way. Um, this is a 50-year-old carcass of a building. There's no two ways about it. it. It has seen its best days. This will be a field day for mechanical vendors coming down the pike for the next dozen years or whatever. I don't know what it's going to be. 
and it'll be straining our township budget years to come, trying to keep up with it, and it'll all be gone. I'll be gone. If you're still here, you'll be stuck paying it. And, you know, um, I can see uh, a rec center, but there's a way of doing it. This is not the way at this point tonight. Anyhow, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Trustee Dwayne. I'd like to read uh, some sources we got from Township Focus, which is written by the MTA. Among the most frequent uses cited during the question and answer and asked of MTA, which would be considered allowable uses for ARPA are. The board members have this. I'm just reading it for the public. Township hall and facility construction, renovations, and expansions. Township facility, equipment systems, and upgrades, including ventilation, security systems, and features, parking lot, paving, etc. Emer emergency service vehicles and purchase for public safety department, such as personal protection equipment, turnout gear. Cemetery maintenance or expansion. Township maintenance vehicles, parks and recreation facilities, maintenance and expansion, computer equipment, road projects, recycling services, outdoor lighting, election equipment including ballot drop boxes, feasibility studies, and matching funds for non-federal programs. And that's authored by the MTA. All the board members got it. I just read that for the public. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Treasurer Elliott. Thank you. Um, just for clarity purposes, uh, what Mr. Domink is referring to is called the final rule, and um, and so in that in that document, um, and I uh, had our finance director uh, pull up some documents and work with me so that I could uh, double check and give you the. Um, give you the correct uh, reading. It says, because all but one Michigan Township ARPA recipient received a total payment of less than 10 million, and this is referring to townships, by the way, all those townships may choose to use the revenue loss formula or instead use any or all of their ARPA payment up to a maximum of 10 million without having to make the revenue loss calculation. Um, furthermore, with the uh, issuance of the final rule, and that's what it's called, there was some different, there was clarity um, over time. So it said most townships will choose to use a standard allowance up to $10 million of its total ARPA payment instead of calculating lost revenue. So government services that are included are providing police and fire, maintenance of infrastructure, pay-as-you-go, roads, bridges, township halls, parks and recs facilities, um, maintenance utilities, modernization of cybersecurity, election equipment, GIS mapping, environmental remediation. Um, so that was a little bit of clarity that we got from our finance director, just to kind of um, piggyback on what uh, Trustee Domingue had said. I also, um, had gone through and been doing a lot of uh, research in the, I think the, what the main questions was, um, was my number one question that I had for staff and as doing that research was, um, you know, why can we use ARPA funds and can we? So that was the question and, and the answer was fi the final rule, yes. So, um, and then why, uh, asking what's the vision between why using the ARPA funds and um, and the the answer to that that I got was it was the greater good for whatever was the going to benefit the most of the the community the largest portion of the community um, and then of course how do we pay for the repairs what is our timeline for the repairs and those are things that I had asked um, director Sonnenberg um, I also had asked, why now are we purchasing um, that? And um, is this, wh what is the purpose of the opportunity, right? Um, how is it being used as an election center? How did that go? What is the plans? Because um, we did have a meeting, and, and I haven't had a chance to ask the clerk, but maybe she can en enlighten us on how that went and how her use is there. Um, anticipated uses for the rest of the building. I think we've touched on some of that. This, um, the talking about having a community center started um, probably in 2017, I believe it was, 2016 is when um, that talk, with that talk, it really got ramped up after COVID. And um, it's it's funny how quickly we forget how, um, how desperate people were for green space and for recreational spaces and for large um, areas and um, how that affected people's mental health and wellness. And um, so there was a lot of requests for that, a lot of demands for 
for the green spaces and for places where um, kids could go and recreate, they were, you know, distancing, all of those things. That wasn't that long ago, you know. And we have to remember that was what the heart of this was. That was what the commission was when this um, opportunity came and this conversation really started when the, the school district said, we don't, you know, are you guys interested in leasing part of the building? And I, I'm not going to say who had the conversation first. I think it was a conversation that's been go ongoing in the community for a long time. I am heard in some of the questions that maybe also I would have um, for maybe um, Michelle uh, Vanerson or Josh Sonnenberg was um, what percent of your participation change, and you may not have this, you may not be ready, um, since we began to use the community center. Um, Josh, you, um, you talked about the eight acres over at um, Shelby Township is versus the 18 acres. And um, I know that we've had a lot of discussion about um, how that green space and what's the importance of having that green space and some of the things that we are obvious green space um, is going to be sus uh, overall sustainable building. Um, so a lot of people are pushing back because, yes, everybody wants to. Chesterfield Township has become a, a popular place. It's why we're we're all here and many of us have lived here and we moved here and I know that the main reasons that my family moved here was because we were close to the expressway it was good schools and low taxes and I believe that a lot of other people also moved here for those same reasons and it's the reason why a lot of people are moving here now I know that um, I, I have a family member who has been looking for uh, a space to open an office and there is nothing there is nothing. What's left is kind of not places that you want to open an office. There's not much left in this area, in the Anchor Bay area. Um, I know that I received a phone call uh, from somebody today who was looking for a 30,000 square foot building. And they didn't know that this, this, quest, this question was going to be asked today. And um, they were saying, you know, they can't afford to build because of um, the cost to build nowadays. And so they were looking to rehab a building. Um, that has become very popular. If you go down to Mount Clemens, in Mount Clemens, they're rehabbing all those old buildings. And it's, it's amazing. Um, went up to St. Clair uh, and the, the old shopping center in St. Clair, that is being rehabbed, the outside is being all done, and there's all kinds of people moving in. Um, so this does seem to be um, something that is happening more, um, is people rehabbing buildings. Uh, we see churches moving into areas and redoing those buildings. So this is not an uncommon practice. Um, I have a question that we can talk about in to um, my fellow trustees, and um, Hank said that he would support this and find a building. What would be the plan that you would support? And I know you said you'd support a millage, but excuse me. But would it be what would be the actual plan? What kind of building would you have? Because we can see it that this is um, maybe a eighteen or $20,000 project if you were to build one here on, the, say, the township in the back of the township property. If, we, if you had a millage and you said, hey, a half a mill, and in the investment report, and I'll be happy to show you, um, in comparison, right, if you have, if you have say, what you're, the library is getting, which is uh, 0 0.61120, that in generates $1.1 million in income to them. Is that enough in order to build a $20 million facility, a brand new facility, rather than rehabbing this one or finding community partners? These are good questions and questions that I don't mind discussing, and that's what this is, the discussion. Um, I think that there was a lot of great points brought up. I appreciate everybody for doing that. And um, I kind of leave uh, some of these things for um, maybe for a response from the supervisor, um, from Josh or um, Michelle, or even from Hank or David. Thank you. Board Mayor. Thank you. Just to address the uh, question on use of part of this building for uh, the election center and how that turned out. I will say that the facility um, is almost perfect for our needs. Uh, so for us, there is a benefit there, but we are benefiting with under a lease as well. I don't know if Anchor Bay has been approached 
with the possibility of extending a lease uh, for another year. Uh, we have secured it through the rest of 2024 for the 2024 election cycle. But uh, after the modifications were made, um, it, it, it serves our purposes very, very well. It serves very good flow uh, for traffic, uh, foot traffic for elections. However, if we were to lose the ability to have that facility, it would be a, an ask of ours uh, in future elections, um, or the ask of, of the clerk, whoever that might be, uh, would have to ask the board for some kind of modification to another facility, because if we didn't have access to it, um, we just don't have any other facility currently available in the township that could handle what that facility does. Uh, however, that being said, we have had a precinct and this might answer a question that was asked earlier, um, students are often in the building during elections. There is no law or rule requiring them not to be. Um, we've often had to make special accommodations for that, but uh, there is no requirement for students not to be in the building. Um, although our uses were all in the area that was only leased by Chesterfield, not involving the school or the students at all, uh, just simply in our leased portion. However, um, going forward, we would have to to consider some other place to go. So uh, it works well for the purposes right now, but uh, we could extend a lease and, and still have access to it. If we didn't, we would just have to find somewhere else. So, But that's the, the answer to the question of um, how did it work out for our purposes? Uh, it works out very well. However, I don't think that should be a determining factor. Uh, we just have to find another opportunity. But for the last, ever since I've been clerk, that location has been a polling location. Sugarbush Elementary has always been a polling lo location. We have had elections there at least 12 years that I know of, so and probably prior to that. So um, it has always been uh, some sort of an election activity location. I expect that it will be in the future, whether we have ownership of it or not. Um, we will continue to have ongoing um, we have an ongoing relationship with Anchor Bay Schools that we would continue, I would assume, our agreement, our use agreement with them to utilize that as a polling location in the future. Thank you. Trustee Bossford. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I would like to uh, address some of the issues that were uh, brought up earlier, too. Um, some have already been addressed. I won't repeat myself, but will repeat what's already been said. Uh, I did check into the, uh, the lease that we currently have does allow us to use the school building. There were no restrictions on using it for elections or anything else. So perhaps individual employees of the school district maybe were not aware and thought it was different from what they were used to, but we did not violate any lease in any way, shape, or form. Um, the library director was not in any way coerced into writing the letter that he wrote. I hold on. Trustee Box. I I talked to the director. I heard the director speak, and he said one of the things that he said a whole bunch of things. But one of them was we need we want to continue being good partners with the township. And was interested in um, supporting projects that um, the township was interested in. Users on the sewer line that talk about, I heard it brought up a number of times, people um, tap, are putting in a newer sewer line and no one's using it and all, the, all of us are paying for it. When people and businesses move in, want to hook up, they pay and they pay their share of, of, the, um, of the, the, excuse me, through the, um, their tap in fee that is how we get reimbursed, and that's how we recover the costs for that. And anyone can shake their head, and they can go, no, no, Mr. no, and all Mr. of that, Supervisor, but that is the, exactly Mr. how Supervisor, it is. Mr. Supervisor, point of trust information. Me, I, trust, just stop. No, no, I, there, there's, a, there's a question nobody about the germaneness of her. She's this just, is not on the agenda she, item she's involving speaking, our Nobody problem. interrupted you. Well, you I, have free will you, to you, stop you, making You have a point of information, Mr. Supervisor, which is... If her comments are not germane, as the steward of this meeting, you're she supposed to interrupt She is making comments directly related to this item. The, the, She's the, sewer, the, sewer line is, the sewer line stop. is related to the purchase stop. of Sugar Bush. It was brought up in comments. It, Let her continue. You, you don't know how to run a meeting, yeah, sir. Yeah, I know. You, there's a lot of things that you say. Yeah. Germane is the word that she's looking for. 
Trustee Vosburgh, please. This is very germane because these were some of the issues that people are thinking we should spend money on something other than this. And that's why I brought it up because I, we do have, um, we, we follow procedures and people don't think we do, but we do. And so that's, what, that's why I'm bringing those issues up. Some of the others I was going to bring up have already been addressed. And I guess from, from my own perspective, I agree with a lot of things that were said, but there's an opportunity in front of us. And as a property owner myself, a homeowner making decisions, sometimes we make decisions not, in the, not quite in the order somebody would if you were just to lay it out and you had all the time and all the money in the world. But this is something that um, an opportunity has come along. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll just make some quick comments and address a couple of the questions that haven't been answered. This building is currently operating as a school um, and it passes all um, standards that a school needs to operate now. Parks and Rec has always been funded out of the general fund historically and uh, it will continue. We've done a lot of models with uh, how this cost impacts the general fund and, and uh, we can sustain this operation and purchase. Um, in regards to the request for eventual request for the use of ARPA funds, it is an allowed expense. It's been checked and vetted, and uh, this is an allowable expense. To the question of has a mitigation survey been done on um, hazardous material, it has done. It was done by the board, approved by the board in September or October of 2023. That report is uh, lengthy and detailed. We'll make it available to anyone who wants to see it. And again, just a, a comment that this is being utilized as a school currently. And um, I, I just want to be clear, I, I, yeah, I listen to everybody. There's, uh, there's no doubt I have a choice. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to do. But in regardless, in the comments of I know what the votes are, I don't. This wouldn't be on the agenda if I wasn't very comfortable with the residents that I've speak to that are in support of this also. So um, I will go to round two, Trustee Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I, I, I appreciate the... Uh, I understand. If we talk to the if we talk to the users at the community center and we talk to the seniors, I I don't know of anybody that thinks that the community center is a bad place. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. I agree with the commissioner that spoke. Uh, she spoke very well. I I agree with the uh, argument. There 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 are very good points to whether or not you, you renovate an existing building and do something creative, as Josh pointed out, which has been done to great success in other communities. Uh, he's got some great ideas in terms of the ceiling and low cost ways, but what, I, what I'm principally opposed to is having that debate and having that discussion with no money. So we have I don't know, do we pay our electric bill? Maybe, maybe we save a few bucks on the electric bill. But the, the, the debate that we're having, the debate that we're having now is done prior to the funding that would be necessary for either of those paths. So if we bought a new building and we renov or we renovated, th those, are, those are really good uh, discussions when you have a funding stream. We don't have it. We don't have it. And in terms of the, um, you know, again, I, I don't want to pick apart anybody else's, uh, but in terms of the questions that were asked back down here, I just think without, without going back and forth with each point on whether we should buy or build or the people want it or they don't, the one way that we know that the residents want is to let them weigh in on it first. Let them decide, and we could use this, we could use this paradigm, this scenario, as the ask. So when you said, well, if not, the, you know, something, what are we gonna go to the voters with? Let's just take this one. It's been worked on for over a year. We have very good analytics from two government entities, the library, the township, we have appraisals, we have engineers, I understand now we have an environmental study that will be made available after the purchase, which is great. But all of the things that we know about this building, 
let's take to the voters and say this is what we project the cost to be over the next however many years and we would like to put on the ballot for your consideration a millage of X amount to cover those costs. That's the only part that we're really lacking here in terms of my, that and the uh, just disgusting lack of transparency throughout the process, but that's, that's the responsibility of one board member. And uh, the, the issue regarding the lease and the ability to extend the lease, I think that we could do that I know that maybe the elections went perfectly from your standpoint, but they weren't so great for some of the students that were in that building. And there was tremendous upheaval at the school board. And I don't know that we violated or didn't violate any part of the lease. I know that the, the, the owner of the building probably wasn't gonna let us off the hook by making an issue out of the lease, so we just kind of swept it under the rug. But the reality is students were displaced Students were pulled out of the classroom. They had no idea that there would be the voting public sharing parking lots and so forth. And so uh, when I questioned it in January about did we talk to the supervisor, uh, interrupted my request to talk to the attorney and said he had it covered. It wasn't covered. But I do think we could extend this lease um, for a period of time to allow the voters to weigh in on whether or not they want to fund it. And if they, if they maybe, maybe they don't want to fund this, maybe they'll pass a bill and say that we want to build new. But the point is, is we go to them first. So I would like to offer a motion to table this, postpone this vote until the second meeting in August, which I believe is 827. Support. I have a motion to, to table or postpone until 827, made by Trustee Joseph, supported by Trustee Anderson. Clerk Berry. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Nay. Trustee Vosberg. No. Treasurer Elliott. No. Supervisor Kirsten? Nope. Clerk Berry? Aye. Trustee Anderson, do you have any second round questions? Motion fails. No. The concerns, thank you. The concerns I had is that uh, we, got a, we got a pile of bills coming into this township. And I'm not going to go through them again. I know that one of my uh, fellow trustees uh, jumped on a part about the bond issue for, I believe it's the county line sewer, which will not benefit any of the current residents. It will not, although the current residents and or stakeholders will be paying for it. And I know that when that sewer runs down the 26 mile road, that businesses and developers will be paying tap fees for water and sewers that'll go to the township. That's the way it works. We're not gonna reimburse the residents for a 20 year bond issue. And that's the only point I want to bring up. I think we're, I just really concerned about the fiscal health moving forward. And uh, like I said before, I think most of these people will be gone. They'll be stuck with it. That's it. Thank you, sir. Any further comments? Any further comments? Any further comments? Clerk Barry. Just a couple questions that I didn't get to uh, ask on the first go. Um, the uh, most recent appraisal is approximately a year old. Is that correct? Is, are we going to be, what's the most current appraisal date? Uh, In, Josh, you got the top of your head? Eight. Ten months old, I would. Uh, about ten months. Is there any reason to think that that would be any different now or? None that I'm, I'm aware of. Again. I just know property values have gone up. I didn't know if it would show a a uh, higher value on the appraisal and if there's a value to doing Let's, another appraisal at this time? No, I I wouldn't think it would benefit us, but I'll listen to you. Okay, well, I, I just was curious because I know that property values are um, continuing to increase and I'm wondering if we might have a better picture of the valuation of the property um, with a more current appraisal. I didn't know how, um, how much it would cost to get one or what the timeline would be to get one. 
Um, but I just think maybe they'd give us a little clearer picture, maybe a little more recent picture. Um, the other question that I have is the ongoing maintenance cost. So I was just doing a little bit of math, and, and I'm not the best at math, probably Treasurer Elliott's probably better at math than I am. But um, when I was doing the math, I figured this is about a $14 million proposition all in with the maintenance, the, all the improvements, plus the purchase price, allowing for a bit of a contingency, maybe 12 to 14 million. Um, but over 10 years with 50,000 residents, I think it breaks out to be about $28 per resident per year, which is not outrageous. I don't think the price is outrageous, although I'm very um, sensitive to, and I, and, I, and I do think the one question I'd like to have answered is why now? I, I think that is a good question. Is there any reason why we couldn't wait a bit on this, just to maybe get an updated appraisal? Possibly, um, possibly talk to the school district, and that's my next question is, have they discussed or have we discussed with them the possibility of a lease extension? And if so, what does that look like? Again, just to compare our options to the purchase versus a lease, um, it might not be a lease is even possible. And so that's not even an issue to consider. But those are just a couple questions I think came up tonight that bear, and that's why I voted for the motion to postpone as well, just because I thought, okay, those are questions that I don't think we've answered quite yet, and maybe it would behoove us to get those answers um, first. But um, those are just some questions. Maybe you can shed some light on that. And, and also, too, I know we talked about this prior, if you can um, share. I know there was some data collected from residents in the past about their desire for um, Parks and Rec uh, or, or for, for a community center or some or investment in Parks and Rec, and I don't know how, how recent that is, but if, if you could share that as well. I know there's four or five different things there, but um, just want to kind of get it all at once. So the, dis the topic of a lease extension has never been discussed. The, we've approached this. Uh, we uh, the request was enter into discussions with them to purchase the building from the onset. So again, because of market changes and the timeline that we were confronted with, that's why we're here now. Um, I don't know, and I'm not going to speak for the school, what direction they're going to go. Um, I think they have other options. I'm going to revert back to um, what Trustee Vosberg had indicated. This is about an opportunity, and the opportunity is now. In light of the joint use and issues that were raised, I think the school was very comfortable with meeting and discussing a sale and an exit July of this year. But again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not intimately, uh, I don't know what their plans are. They were just very satisfied with the agreement that we worked out. That is why it's here now. Thank you. Any further questions or comments, Treasurer Elliott? So um, this last couple of weeks, uh, I've been working on some cash flows with the supervisor's office, and you've spoken to um, Mr. Supervisors a couple of times about we're okay with that. Do you um, do you want to elaborate a little bit? Like you're okay with where we're at on the the cost of um, of the the budgeting for this? Yes, that's correct. And again, the, my intention is to request the in closing the use of ARPA funds to close the sale out. We've looked at the models, we looked at the cost of this, and what our long-term uh, liabilities are. Again, it is a func functioning school as of today, and the school district, has, uh, as has been pointed out, has serviced every item within the building. Um, we're, we, we can take this on with the general fund, uh, as Parks and Rec has always come out uh, of the general fund, its operation, and I think uh, expand the use of programming within that building along with um, the entertainment of uh, a library and other partners that would come in and uh, sit down with us for a user agreement. Um, personally, when this first uh, started and we didn't have any information that we have today, I was hoping that um, this would be the answer that everybody wanted in the community, that this would be the answer that this space would provide without having to raise taxes of any kind, without having to go for a millage, would we provide a space for both the library and a rec center, and that somehow would we be able to maybe get some uh, grant money, use you know di different funding sources, and be able to, to be able to bring as a partnership. I find that going through this whole process, one of the things is, is that 
there's, there's a very siloed, right? And let's look at what's best for the township overall. Um, and to me, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with this, and I have uh, gone through the numbers, I've gone through the ARPA ruling, I've talked to the auditors, I've talked to the finance director, I've done the cash flow reports, and I do know that the concerns that everybody has are very um, legitimate. They're very much the same concerns I have had as also, but this is a uh, $2.8 million opportunity. We're buying the land, and it's almost as the building is a bonus, and um, the, that you use that, and that's 18 acres of land right here in the heart of Chesterfield, and, um, and then and we can, if we if we have to, we can use this property in various ways uh, going forward. And we have um, conversations going with, if the library is not interested, that was the question, are you sure, are you 100% sure, because how will the library actually achieve their goals, that would be my question to them. How would they achieve their goals? How are we gonna do a Parks and Rec millage? I think the most surprising piece of everybody's comments today that I learned is that the majority of this room, I believe, is asking for a Parks and Rec millage to be put on the ballot um, this August, which I find extremely surprising, um, considering so many millages have failed in this community. But if um, that is something that people are wanting to do, then I would say that um, you know we can explore that and, and should if the, that many people are asking for it. Thank you. Any further comments? Trustee Joseph. Quick question, Mr. Supervisor, um, and just to clarify. I'm, I'm not looking to go to the voters for a millage on an extortion basis. I can't go to the voters and say, we have a building and we can't pay for it, and if you don't pass the millage, we're going to have to evict the seniors. I'm not asking for that. I'm saying exactly the opposite of that. And I really don't have any more comments other than the conversation that you alluded to with the supervisor and the funding stream conversation that you've had, the belief that you could accomplish this without a millage, I'm wondering the funding that you're looking at versus the funding that I see because what you and the supervisor are certifying in your funding stream discussion is that the next board, if any of us are on the next board, we know actuarial study, whatever, whichever opinion you want to take, that in the next three years, you're committing $5.8 million to that building. And that's actually on the wishful side because it's one to three years, very meticulously done. One to three years, you have a $5.8 million expense. And I don't know the funding stream that you're referencing that allows us to take it out of the general fund with the addition of all of the things that we've added to the general fund. I don't know that funding stream. Last comment, and um, the, the community good, there's no doubt that a community center provides dividends. The question is how, size, scope, cost, and what do they want to pay for? I think that should be asked and, and answered before we embark on this. And Mr. Supervisor, in terms of the community good, your judgment is a bit skewed because you spent a million on the, on the boat ramp. And that wasn't, that wasn't widespread appeal the way that this is. This does have widespread appeal, but you're not just making a singular purchase and all of the ARPA recommendations from every organization that offers an opinion says the same thing. Shouldn't invest your ARPA money on an ongoing project, this most certainly is. We have millions, millions committed over the next 10 years with 5.8 in the first three. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? I'm going to read the motion just so I'm very clear based on uh, uh, what I'm specifically asking you to do. A motion by Supervisor Kirsten, supported by Treasurer Elliott, to authorize the Township Supervisor to sign the contract for the purchase of the sale dated from Anchor Bay High School, 
for Anchor Bay School System, dated February 29, 2024. Clerk Berry. Supervisor Kirsten. Yes. Treasurer Elliott. Yes. Trustee Anderson. No. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Clerk Berry. No. Item 10B, when you're ready. Item 10B is to approve a request by the supervisor's office to renew the annual membership for SEMCOG at a cost of $7,054. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Clerk Berry. Clerk. Trustee Demink. Comments from the board? <clears throat> Clerk Berry. We have Clerk. a motion by Clerk Berry, supported by Trustee Demink, to approve item 10B. Clerk Berry. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Item 10C. Item 10C is a recommendation by Supervisor Kirsten to appoint Rob Cuss to the Beautification and Tree Board from March 12, 2024 through July 1, 2024. So moved. Motion by Trustee Demink, supported by Supervisor Kirsten. Director? Just wanted to give a quick update that um, Mr. Cuss woke up under the weather this morning. He had every intention to be here, but um, did not have the ability to come tonight. So this will be his first board appointment. Uh, in Chesterfield Township and all the years that he's lived here. He's excited to give back to the community. And then for the Beautification Commission, this will be uh, member number five. Thank you. Any questions, comments? I have a motion by Trustee to make supported by Supervisor Kirsten to approve the appointment. Clerk Berry. Supervisor, uh, excuse me, Trustee Domingue. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Item 10D. Item 10D is to approve a recommendation to make improvements to Brandenburg Park Clubhouse in an amount not to exceed $8,375. So moved. Motion by Trustee DeBank. Support. Supported by Treasurer Elliott. Mr. Sonnenberg. Thank you. Um, this is really a simple three-part request that was brought up to us by um, some residents that have used the building recently. It's not a request that has to be done. It just adds benefits to the building. So I just want to go through the request. Um, there's three parts. The first part is, Karen, can you go to the, the, the next slide? Yeah. Sorry, you can't really see it. Um, or I'm sorry. I'm sorry, back up to the other one. I, I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. As you can see in the brand new building, which we saw a picture earlier, we built a new wall which separates the mechanical room from the main room. That's the wall where you see we kind of push the cooler in. There's a doorway, which is really an archway. There's not actually a door. That wall never went to the deck. So part of our request here today is to, for sound purposes, because that's the number one thing we get in that building, that it can be a little bit loud. And we want to run that wall up to the rest of the deck and then install a door there so it keeps people out of the, it just closes off the mechanical area. So that's a small improvement we wanna make. Now if you'll go to the next slide, Karen. This is, we installed new windows and doors. Um, hopefully you had a chance to get out and see them. Those were some of the original windows and doors. On each side of the walls um, of either door, there's two entry doors. We have a wall that comes out. It's actually a cinder block wall wrapped in drywall. What it's hard to see in this picture, and I apologize, it's more evident in the white picture, there's a cinder block wall up top and it just looks kind of old and there's a two by four, which is like a sill plate at the bottom, which is, it just doesn't look very finished. And the top of those walls, when we ran them up, we weren't sure how we were gonna finish them. Well, now that we're done with the windows and we got a little bit of repair work to do around the new doors, we just wanna make it cleaner and for sound purposes as well, run that drywall up to the deck. So. That was one of the other things we want to do. And then we also have $1,000 in there. We're going to buy rectangled sound panels and put them on the ceiling. Like I said, these are not things that we have to do. It's just when you get in the space and it gets packed to capacity. And um, we were just looking at an opportunity to just add these few items. And the total request I have is for $8,375. Questions from the board? Any questions from the board? 
A motion by Trustee Domingue, supported by Treasurer Elliott, to approve item 10D. Clerk Berry. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Trustee Anderson. No. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Berry. Aye. Item 10E. Item 10E is to approve a recommendation to rent portable toilets for township parks in 2024 through Cormac Services in an amount not to exceed $12,025. Is there a motion to approve? So Supervisor. moved. Trustee Vosberg, I will support that. Mr. Sonnenberg? So yes, this is a portable toilets that are located year-round at Brandenburg Park, Weber Park, the Historic Village, seasonally at Pollard Park, and for summer camp at the community center. Um, the, this is a request, it's the same, it's actually, we did the same thing last year. We just, facilities wound up taking over the port potties, and when we totaled up the numbers, even though they're through different general ledgers, when you total up the amount, the amount for our seasonal porta potties is $12,025. That includes uh, a series of cleanings that we buy in advance, which is a total of $1,400. It's $25 to $45, depending if it's on a weekday or weekend. Although porta potties seem pretty simple, when someone's out at the park and our bathrooms are closed, everybody looks for porta potties. It's kind of one of the biggest complaints we, if we don't have one. So we do like to keep them in these areas year round, and that's the total cost. And we would like to bring that to the board just to show you that although we, over the years it's been broken up into individual accounts, we look at the total to one vendor. We just wanted to bring it to the board Thank so you. we could get approval. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Questions from the board? Trustee Joseph? Josh, just to be clear, you're, you're saying that from a budget standpoint, this, this money is already allocated uh, as part of a park service. You're just restructuring how you purchase the product in essence. Instead of monthly, you're going to put a, a dollar amount based on what you spent last year, and that's what we're going to go with for this, uh, for this uh, service. Yes, and just so you know, you have a sheet attached that's pretty detailed. Um, yeah. It kind of breaks down. They got pricing on all three different vendors, and it kind of breaks down in detail for you. It, it, it seems like a more, uh, well, cleaner, more sanitary sort of arrangement to have one vendor responsible for it, you know, the entire service contract. So, thanks. Clerk Mayor, any questions? I have a motion by Trustee Vosberg, supported by Supervisor Kirsten, to approve item 10E. Clerk Barry. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Item 10F. Item 10F is to approve a recommendation to award a three-year generator inspection and maintenance service agreement to Michigan CAT at a yearly charge of $28,303 for year one, $29,590 for year two, and $30,850 for year three, totaling $88,743 for the three-year contract. Is there a motion to approve? Supervisor Kirsten will make a motion to approve. Is there any support? Second. Clerk Berry. Josh, real quick, how many generators do we have in the fleet? Uh, you know off the top of your head. They're servicing 11 generators. And, and you, I apologize, this, this is a really detailed sheet. Stephanie and uh, Jeremy in our office did a fantastic job putting this together. I actually developed it the last time we did this and they just fine tuned it. What you can see there is it's a la carte. Every generator's in there and every service provided from fuel sampling, it's all broken down. Unfortunately, what we wanted to show everybody is if you look up to the upper right, I apologize, you can't really see it, but there's a huge difference between our last generator contract and this generator contract. Our last contract was three years, this one's three years, but there was a significant increase in all of our prices. So we got um, multiple bids each year. This year, as you can see in those top two bids, the increases were from 79 and 99%, and it's that way across the board. That service just went up that much. So I just wanted to share those details with you. The reason CAT kind of came in at the middle, but CAT's done a really good job and public safety has been working with CAT for years and they provide a level of comfort with their service. Um, and these generators are cri critical to what we do. And it's not really as simple as a small generator. These are large full generators for all of our public safety buildings, our DPW and this building as well. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the board? Seeing no questions. 
Supervisor Kirsten made a motion to approve. Clerk Berry, would you call the roll? Sorry. Supervisor Kirsten. Yes. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domink. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Item 10G. Item 10G is to approve a request by the Department of Public Safety to authorize payment of tuition to send two cadets to the Macomb Police Academy in the amount of $12,084 and two cadets to the Oakland Police Academy in the amount of $11,100. We have applied and been approved for a grant which will cover the cost of their tuition, academy equipment and materials and payroll expenses. Chesterfield Township must disperse the funds first. We will then submit proof of payment and be reimbursed. So moved. Support. Motion by Trustee Domingue, supported by Trustee Anderson. Director Bassett. Uh, as uh, Trustee Anderson had mentioned in his committee report, this is our four uh, recruits that we have in the academy. This request is just authorization to make the payment uh, that will allow us then, after we've uh, actually made payment, to submit for the grant. That grant's already been approved, so we will then uh, recover those costs. Questions from the board? I have a motion by uh, Trustee Domink, supported by Trustee, Trustee Anderson. Clerk Berry. Trustee Domink. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Berry. Aye. Item 10H. Item 10H is to approve a request by the Department of Public Safety to enter into an asset transfer agreement with the Mussey Township Fire Department. The Chesterfield Township Fire Department will transfer air packs, air bottles, and miscellaneous parts and accessories that are no longer needed in exchange for a 2008 Polaris Ranger side-by-side -side UTV. All asset transfers are being received as is and has no further financial obligation to the township. Supervisor Kirsten will make a motion to approve. Is there any support? Support. Trustee Anderson. Director Bassett. Approximately uh, two years ago, the board had approved uh, new air packs for our public safety firefighters. Uh, with that, we had the old equipment that we still have in our possession. This is a request. Uh, we're working uh, with a partner who has a Polaris Ranger side by side that they are not using at this time. We think it'll be a valuable asset, especially with the parks and other things that we'd be able to get in there where we won't be able to access it at times with vehicles and other things. This is a no cost uh, to either party and we've worked with the legal department to draft the agreement. Any questions from the board? Trustee Joseph. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Director Bassett. We, um, we probably could have done a better job covering that in our, uh, in our report, but one of the things that I was struck by when we talked about this was one, the specific uses, and we've had a number uh, of them over the summer with uh, large community events and uh, police and fire presence there, um, open houses, things like that. And the equipment that, that is being uh, traded, this department desperately needs. And so uh, it's a good deal for both of our organizations. And uh, in our discussion with um, Chief Miller, the approximate value for both is uh, pretty equal uh, in terms of the market value. So. Um, I'm not sure the giggles, Mr. Supervisor. I was trying to politely say that it would spare us from you having to hide uh, rentals of such vehicles at the next fishing contest, but uh, I left that out intentionally. This is a good deal for the township and uh, appreciate the work that was done on the trade. Thank you. Just so everyone knows, Muzzy Township is actually uh, the village of Capac, which is eight miles uh, west of Emmett. So, um, there's a motion by Supervisor Kirsten, supported by Trustee Anderson, to approve this transfer. Clerk Barry. Supervisor Kirsten. Yes. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. You know where Cape is, too. Uh, item 11, addendums. There are no addendums. Item 12, public comments. There is a three minute time limit. The floor is open. Hi, Lisa Mincher. Um, I live in Chesterfield and Mariners Point. Um, however we got there, I understand all the financial issues, but I have to thank you for the community center. 
Um, I'm involved in many things in this community, but especially in the senior center. And having that community center extension has offered us more classes, more value, more fun. Um, and I just think it's a really good thing as a township. I've lived in this township since 2001. Um, and I think as a, it'll be a great asset for the community. And I thank you for do, getting it however we get there. <laughs> I understand the value and the money. But I think it's important to our, our seniors that offers a lot of things for us, as well as volunteering for the kids, um, Easter bunnies or whatever it is. It truly brings value to the community to have that extension. Thank you. John Speaker, Chesterfield Township. How do you approve an expenditure of 2.8 million using the ARPA funds and not even have a backup plan to approach Anchor Bay for a lease extension? Under the lease extension, what, what is this board missing? Under the lease extension, we paid our lease and they were responsible, Anchor Bay, for all the repairs and upkeep of that facility. All the expenses and upkeep of that facility. What, what's so hard to, to comprehend? Nobody said that anybody in this room wanted to shut the community center down. Nobody said that. The discussion was to look out for the best interests of the residents and how they're ARPA money was being spent and what the residents wanted. Again, you guys, four of you, the, the, the four, in my opinion, autocrats on this board that, you know, put what you demand over 47,000 residents. It, it's insane to, to put what you want and not go to the residents, which were your bosses. We tell you what we want, and then you're supposed to implement what we want. But starting with the supervisor, I mean, the supervisor, and I've said this plenty of times, he's, he's an autocrat, in my opinion. He, he, this is a fascist board on the right side, in my opinion, that doesn't list, listen to the residents, and, and you guys do whatever the, the, the heck you want. And this has been going on for years. And you know what? Thank God that this is an election year because it is time to clear this entire side of the board out and get new members and individuals in this township that care and listen to the residents. This type of expenditure without going to the residents was just irresponsible and reckless, just to put it blunt. Again, when something happens, a big issue that we're not looking at, yeah, we can sell the property, but realistically, who wants to buy a property that has asbestos in it, has lead in it, lead paint, and mold? I mean, why do you think Anchor Bay, in my opinion, wanted to get rid of it? It would have cost them more, in my opinion, to demolish that building than keep it than for us to buy it. I mean, it, it makes no sense. So that's why they wanted to get rid of it, the upkeep. Christopher Pyrrhic, uh, I just want to take a minute to thank the board for listening to the residents and that is said in sarcasm um, just uh, I don't know what uh, waiting five months how, how that could have been a deal breaker but it, it makes perfect sense uh, so it's just uh, and I don't know how we're going to afford all these repairs we've got uh, missing baseboard over there with holes in the drywall and the drywall is peeling up and it's been like that for months and months and months, but we can't, we can't even fix that, but we'll take on $15 million worth of debt. Thank you.
uh, Janice Young, Chesterfield. Uh, on April 19th, the Chesterfield Township official page shared a post about a dog park survey uh, with public comments accepted from April 12th of 2023 through uh, May 9th. That's 30 days of public comments for a dog park. It received a total of 80 responses and not all of it were in favor of it. Uh, they even provided three ways to vote, including a link to the citizen request form on our township website and a phone number. But yeah, you guys never do anything to promote what goes on in these meetings. Uh, and you're gonna spend two and a half million dollars of our ARPA money to buy this old school and then eight and a half million dollars of our tax money repairing it. Uh, and that doesn't change anything about the building. That just repairs it and gets it back up to par. And then what? Millions more to renovate the inside to accommodate it however we want it to look. Uh, and as it's been stated, ARPA money is not to be used on anything that creates an ongoing or future expenses, which this absolutely and clearly does that. Um, and you know, uh, Supervisor Kirsten, the very first thing you ever said to me sitting over in that corner, you walked over to me and you said, Miss Young, what would you like to see the ARPA funds spend on? Why did you even ask me that? You asked me that a year ago, but it took a whole year to get a meeting with the residents, which was not live streamed, it was not recorded. But the flood meeting was, because Mr. Trustee Joseph paid for that. But he didn't pay for it for this meeting, so I'm, I'm not sure his motives on that. But it was never promoted by anybody. Trustee Joseph made a comment on Facebook about it, uh, that he got it on the agenda, and then not a peep out of anybody until after the meeting was over. And that's, that's dis disgraceful, it's disgusting that you guys would not promote that, but you'd promote a dog park. I mean, where's your priorities? And you know, Parks and Rec really should be put on the ballot. Let us tell you what we want. That'll speak loud and clear. But yet you're afraid to do that because you know darn well it wouldn't pass, just like it won't pass with the library. You know, right now, the economy is tight. And my budget is tight. And you know what I do when, I, when it's like that? I cut back on my spending. But you guys are just spending, I cannot believe the amount of money that you're spending. And you don't seem to care. And I'm really glad this is an election year. And I have worked hard for the last year to get, get the word out to people. And you know what? I stood outside that election poll on that Tuesday, and I talked to people as I passed out flyers to come to this meeting. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to be hard pressed to get those seats again next year. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Nancy Hutchinson. Let me start by thanking Mr. Joseph for saying the only logical, sensical thing I've heard from this board tonight. How about we put it up for a vote? But as I heard Brad say specifically, don't worry, I got the votes in my pocket. And you do. And I probably should preface this by saying I have a master's degree. I've worked in banking for 20 years. I don't know what's going on in these brains. No idea. Because that idea made perfect sense. And you can certainly buy a building with ARPA funds. Perfectly legal to buy a building. You cannot burden your taxpayers with buying that building. Seems pretty simple. Seems very simple. And nobody here is against a community center. I don't think anyone said, we don't want the damn community center. Nobody. We don't think a 50-year-old building with asbestos in it and lead paint, and I completely understand, oh, it's used as a school. It's perfectly safe if you don't touch it. Once you start making alterations to it, then you have to worry about it. Because all these school buildings are the same. All of them have asbestos in them. Once you start making alterations, then you have to worry. 
And why didn't we see an environmental study ahead of time? Still haven't, but you voted on it. Do you not care what it's going to do to the environment? I don't know. I'm just, I'm beyond words. Thank you, ma'am. Anything further? Good job. Um, nothing we can say or do, evidently. It's all already done. You voted. You're buying it. You, ha you had already signed the contract. You just needed the authorized authorization to make it legal. And like you said, Brad, you're a cop for 31 years. You know what people need. You know what we all need. Um, I don't know. I don't know what everybody needs, but somehow you know what 45,000 people in this township need all by yourself. It's amazing. You ought to be proud of yourself, be that, that kind of a person. And, you know, I mentioned, yeah, you're being a cop for 31 years. I have a little problem with cops, you know? Every time I talk to one, uh, I have a discussion with one, they seem to know better than anybody else. Huh? How many times? Been pulled over. Well, you know, I called the police because uh, I, watched, I watched the car go on the shoulder of the road. Right around the school bus, it was stopped with the lights on and everything and that, and the kid stepping off the bus. Almost hit the kid. I followed that car when it was clear. I called the police. The police said, well, I can't do nothing. I didn't see it. Well, I've seen it, and I'm telling you. No, no, doesn't work that way. He has to see it. So I guess it's because Brad can see it. Brad can see the big picture for us in this township that we all need to just accept it. Like I had to accept what the police said. You know, right or wrong, Brad knows. So I want to thank you. I want to I want, want to just appreciate the fact that you're so wise by still have thoughts about your integrity. Yes, I do. And a few others on this end of the board too. Yes. I mean, you know, I, I, can, see, I can see you going along with him on a lot of things. I understand that. And it, as it should be, that's usually the way it is. There's you know, a majority somewhere. But on every item right down the line, for the last year, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Everybody on this side of the board believes he knows it all. You know, I'll tell you what, you shouldn't run for board uh, superintendent. You ought to run for president of the United States because you remind me of a lot of a guy that ran once that knew everything. Hi, I am Christina Ross. I'd like to at least address some things. I sent this entire board an email and I got three responses. Um, thankfully, coming into this township into the municipality with my daughter. I was able to speak to Mr. Kirsten. Um, I got a phone call from Cindy Berry. I spoke with Mr. Joseph as well. And I have to assume that everybody on this board has a child of their own, maybe has a grandchild. Um, mine happens to be autistic and nonverbal. That's a huge deal to me that Sugarbush is a special needs elementary school. And whether or not you guys own or lease the building, currently you lease that part of the building. I have the documents of your lease agreement and 
from not only Mr. Kirsten did I get that, but I also got that from Mr. Jankowski, the superintendent. And that portion of your guys' lease agreements are large groups and meetings and areas will not be used before 4 p.m. That building is used before 4 p.m. all the time while those kids are in school. And Ms. Barry, I, I would like to argue your stance as far as it, early voting, this is the first year of early voting. So saying that polling locations have always been at schools, I have no argument with that. But what I do have an argument with is that was never conveyed to the school system. And in talking with Phil Jankowski and Todd Rathenbaum, I have the email here stating that you guys never got the approval to utilize that school in the manner that you should have gone. And hearing you just say, well, we got the approval from the school district, the superintendent is disagreeing with you. And it's extremely frustrating that a simple phone call of you trying to just connect with me by saying you're a mom, unless you have a child with special needs, you have no idea what I'm going through. So the safety and security of my child is of paramount importance. You said there's 368 early voters. You also said to me that there were 40 voters a day. Those are unvetted people coming in and out of that school building. It is still a school building. And us parents have to be vetted. We have background checks being in and out of that school. All the, co all the contractors that came in to build up walls in that school, were those people vetted? A lot of this board I seem to see are, are police officers or somebody within public service. And as a military daughter, I think public service is great, but it can't just be a slogan that you run off of. If you care about children's safety, my daughter matters too. And to push through your early election voting and say that it went off without a hitch is laughable. That is not the truth, especially with the school system. If you're operating out of the school, fine, but you didn't even notify the school district to allow them to give the parents notice to pull their kids out or have a professional day. So I wanna be very clear that your argument is that you got the approval when you didn't. I just would like transparency, please. All right, Mike Horton, 503 Nancy Bauer. Um, again, always, every time, I feel like I'm broken record coming up here. What do I have to list off? Prioritization of government. Are you guys actually utilizing the priorities of the resources the township is entrusting with you to commit to what the residents want? Again, public trust. It's lost its confidence in this board. Maybe not in every member, but it is, there is a clear disconnect, be it from the uh, residents, the people who attend these meetings, be it even employees within the government, it is very disappointing in with this board. And it goes in the, into the case in point. You know, it hasn't always been this way. I, I know that for sure because I know I've been coming to these things for at least six years or more. And it wasn't like this where it's just the absolute disregard of the public, of any type of dissension. It, it really feels like so long as there's a majority vote on anything, dissent is not allowed. It's not even to be discussed. They, 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 there was a reasonable option put to a vote earlier tonight that would have made more sense in the sense uh, you, you, what, what was vitally important was would the next board be able to decide on this matter? And you have taken away that from the future leaders of this community to make this such a huge important decision. Now, I'd like to also point out that um, at the previous meeting, um, Trustee Vosberg, you like insulted a lot of people by saying that we don't do our homework or research. And there's a lot of people in the audience uh, here tonight or who have left who regularly come. They come with very prepared. They do their homework. They come bringing a, a vital necessity of ideas or discussions. And I think that that's something that should be noted because you guys are not gatekeepers to political information or knowledge. It is not your role. Your role is representation. It's not to be the sole providers. You're not the priests uh, coming down from high where only you can uh, give out the word of God, essentially. That's not how government is supposed to work in this country. 
I'll uh, finish off tonight with um, this is from one of my uh, one of my songs I listen to quite a lot, and it's uh, it's a song about suburbs and stuff. But it's they heard me singing and they told me to stop, quit these pretentious things, and just punch the clock. These days, my life, I feel it has no purpose. But late at night, the feelings swim to the surface. Cause on the surface, the city lights shine. They're calling at me, come and find your kind. Sometimes I wonder what, if the world's so small that we can never get away from the sprawl. Living in the sprawl, dead shopping malls rise like mountains beyond mountains, and there's no end in sight. I need the darkness, someone please cut the lights. Thank you. Enjoy being first. I'd like to thank all of you for showing up tonight and sharing your views with, uh, with uh, all of us present. Um, on a positive note, I'm of the opinion, it's mine alone, that um, the sale of Sugarbush Elementary was an excellent business opportunity, an excellent business opportunity for the Anchor Bay School District. Finally, uh, again, I'd like to congratulate Sergeant Odell on his promotion, as well as uh, Sergeant Cliff Bowerson, who, um, who finally, had, uh, finally got his well-deserved retirement. I'd like to thank you, Cliff, and good night. Trustee Domingue. I'd like to say congratulations to Sergeant Otell on his promotion, and also congratulations to Clint Bowerson on his retirement. Thank you to Josh and Michelle. You guys did a great presentation. You do a great work. Mr. Speaker, you want to tear up the board, go ahead. You've done it. You're good at it. You, you like to do it. But going after department heads or Josh or the people in back, they're damn hard-working people. You want to direct your comments, direct it to the seven of us up here. Like I said, they're doing their job, and they're doing a damn good job. Just because you don't like them, we're the elected ones. You know it. You know how to play the game. You did it good in Sterling. You're doing it good here. So that's all I got to say. Trustee Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, no way to cover everything in three minutes, but um, if I could just, uh, Ms. Young, the comment about the uh, video, um, it was the supervisor's motion for the video. I didn't realize that the township resources wouldn't include a recording of that video. Um, had I known um, that th there was the attempt to just kind of keep everything we did that night quiet, I would have brought a team to video it and posted it. I didn't know until I arrived at the meeting. Um, I'll tell you one of the smartest things I think, Mr. Supervisor, you've done uh, is to not have that video re recorded, that meeting recorded, um, because a lot of people got up and gave some really heartfelt um, testimony about what they think should, should happen. And um, you didn't answer many of their questions. You lectured them. Uh, I think you called them babies or children. There was an individual that pointed out some concerns that maybe there was some personal motivation for you to sell the property and your relationship with the school district, and you took him to task as if you were beyond reproach regarding your integrity. You really crossed the line, and to be perfectly honest with you, right after I appointed or uh, made the motion to appoint you, I got a lot of calls from some residents over on Remington Street, and I can tell you that the conversations I had with those people, really your, your opportunity to uh, be uh, insulted at the questioning of your integrity waved goodbye to you then. So uh, I continue to get calls on that property. I don't see anything uh, criminal or inappropriate, but I will keep looking. I, I don't like uh, the optics of it, I, I really don't. Um, the residents who said tonight that, uh, how much time do I have, Clerk Barry? Because it comes up on me real fast. 55 seconds. Oh, 45 seconds, great. 50. So the, um, the, the one thing that I wanted to say, we spent, we got a $20 million debt over the next 20 years for sewer pipe that's going in on the north end of our township. We said it was for the greater good. We were contacted, the entire board, by a resident up there who, it's going in right in front of her house. 
Township did a spectacular job of making sure that the quality of life in the North End is disrupted, you know, because we're going to have great development up there. So they know their way of life is changing. But we actually now have, during the installation, diverted water that's flooding out families' property. They're completely underwater uh, on the outskirts of their property. We give them lip service. And it's, it's really garbage. And we need to do something for, for that family. Thank you. Trustee Vosberg. Thank you. Um, enough's been said tonight. Thank you. Mr. Elliott. Thank you. A um, couple of things. Uh, Mike from Partners in Architect had a slide up in his presentation that said no hazardous materials were identified. Um, also, um, uh, to the resident, Chris, who um, has the autistic child, um, you know, I, I, my compassion goes out to you, and um, that is, th there's no, no role of the treasurer in um, what the clerks uh, plan for usage and staffing um, are. So um, there's no role for me to respond other than I understand um, your concerns. Um, the uh, lastly, and, and I'll continue to say it, and I've said it in, in past board meetings, um, it, professional business and, and having a discussion, and I, what I appreciate about tonight's board meeting was um, actually the discussion that happened at this board. It was healthy, it was good. Whether you agree with the, the conclusion or not, it was a good discussion, and we had a lot of um, uh, deliberation that was, was uh, was refreshing. It was refreshing to have good deliberation. And um, what, what's absent in tonight's meeting that is not very often absent between the board members um, during that discussion is name calling. There are some little digs that we've all heard and, and what have you. Um, but the name calling that goes on in this room by various people, it, it's not something if you drive by any of the schools and, it, and you see the word respect is usually at the top. And that's what we're teaching our children is to be respectful to one another. And I am pleading and begging as, as all of you have established yourself as community leaders and please be role models by stopping the name calling just find other ways to communicate um, the attacks on the the uh, employees here uh, we've had them come up is unacceptable it's just unacceptable it's disappointing and disheartening and um, you've been asked and over and over to not do that if you have a, a, a dis discouraging um, uh, in encounter with uh, an employee um, in their day-to-day -day job, then you know email the board about that. But to to um, mock them or make fun of them when they're talking or laughing at them, that's that's disappointing to see. And I think we're all better than that. Um, and the name calling is just not okay. And with that, um, thank you. Thank you for all your comments. Clerk Baird. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the other township departments that were so integral in uh, such a successful election, and that is our facilities and operations team, um, specifically Mike Mullen and Stephanie Yenna. Just, I can't say enough about those two folks. I know they're here in the back, and I'm not saying that because they're here, but we are so grateful and appreciative of everything that they did. Uh, there was so much that had to be done. As I've said before, we had six months of preparation that had to be squeezed into about a handful of 45 or so days, and they were just absolutely, we couldn't have done it without them and their team, and uh, Josh being there on election day as well, helping to facilitate that, and we want to thank them so much. Also, the Parks and Rec Department, Michelle and, and her, her folks over there, um, just so cooperative and sharing space and have been so accommodating for us. And oh, again, we could not have provided the service to the residents that we did without the cooperation of those individuals. And I'd just like to publicly thank them um, because I can't thank you enough. Also, uh, I know that uh, there were points in time when everybody was kind of all hands on deck. Uh, Treasurer Elliott uh, stepped in and helped us out in some cases, uh, some instances when, when we needed an extra hand and um, just, you know, everything from just problem solving to providing whatever resources she had available in her department as well. So uh, supervisor also cooperating with us. Uh, it couldn't have happened without all of those 
folks participating, and I just would like to publicly thank uh, all of them. Uh, lastly, uh, we do have a May election, but we do not have early voting for May. Uh, that's only required for uh, state and federal elections. So the next uh, about or the next uh, time early voting will be available will be for the August primary. Thank you. Thank you. I pretty much said in my presentation what's going on with the township. Again, the big thing is we're beginning the 2025 fiscal year budget. The capital planning is uh, uh, being prepared. We'll review that obviously. In the supervisor schedule, there's a timeline that we'll meet. And um, again, we, uh, the, we were the recipients of a, of a grant from the uh, Lisa, Congre or Lisa McLean, and we'll continue to pursue those grant opportunities for the township across the board. That being said, we have a closed session tonight. Um, I'll take a motion to enter into closed session. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to enter into closed session to consider the purchase of real property pursuant to Section 8.1.D of the Open Meetings Act and also to consult with the township attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with Althea Holdings, LLC, versus Charter Township of Chesterfield, Macomb County Circuit Court Docket Number 23-003380CE, pursuant to Section 8.1.E of the Open Meetings Act. S Supervisor Kirsten will support that motion. Clerk Berry, call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. At, at 10.04, for the record. Yes.
Clerk Perry, make a, did you make a motion to return to open session? I will make a motion to return to open session I at 1023. I will support that motion. Sorry. Clerk Berry. Clerk Berry, aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. We are back in open session. Clerk Berry, you have uh, you want to read the two prepared that you have? Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to direct the township attorney to settle as discussed in closed session with reference to item. It would be 14 14, a. 14 a. B. B. Uh, to consult with the township attorney regarding the trial or settlement strategy in connection with Althea Holdings LLC versus Ch Charter Township of Chesterfield. So the motion is to direct the township attorney to settle this case as discussed in closed session. Supervisor Kirsten will make a motion to approve. Is there any support? Second. Clerk Berry. Call roll. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. No. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Motion passed. Yes. Yep. Uh, item 15, adjournment. Motion. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a. I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to direct the township attorney to draft an agreement to purchase real estate as discussed in closed session. Supervisor Kirsten, again, will make a motion to support. Or make a motion. Oh. Is there a motion to support? Second. Clerk Barry. Call the roll. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Item 15, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? No. Trustee Vosberg. Support. Supported by Elliott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 1024.